This is a pre presentation of the Oklahoma Sports Network. Any other use of this telecast or any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of the game without the Oklahoma Sports Network's consent is prohibited. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be used without express written consent. Welcome to Cash Oklahoma here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. You're watching Cash Bulldogs football as we get set for the 4A1 district opener between the Cash Bulldogs and the Bethany Broncos. I'm Billy Palmer. Alongside me is Vincent Saylor. Don't call him Vinny. <laughs> uh, we are ready for some football. We've had a week off now, and we are ready for some football. No doubt about it. We are excited to be back out here. Got a big matchup today against the Bethany Broncos, and uh, looks like we're honoring some service people right now. A bunch of flags coming down the little gauntlet over there, and uh, beautiful night for football, so excited, no doubt, to get this District 4A1 matchup going tonight, and hopefully we can come out with a one nothing. Districts, yeah. Yeah, district. Yeah, you always uh, want to start out district play one and zero. This is yeah. where everything matters now. Really, everything, you know, everything counts up to this point. But this is where everything, the playoff seating and such like that goes. But you know, also we've also had some changes because of the COVID already in the, right. the schedule across four A one. Uh, Elgin was supposed to play Elk City this week. Clinton was supposed to play Newcastle uh, because Newcastle had some COVID issues and because Elk City had some COVID issues. Um, now <laughs> Elgin yeah. is playing Clinton tonight. Yeah, so. both of those. Yeah, both of those guys are kind of on a bye week. I guess they'll try and match up that weekend that uh, Elgin was supposed to be playing Clinton. Our game next week, just to kind of give you a heads up, is going to be pushed back to Saturday because yep. Newcastle's got uh, got the quarantine going on, so we're going to give them an extra day of practice next week. So you'll find us here live in the Oklahoma Sports Network Saturday at 2, unfortunately. But we'll be there loud and proud in Newcastle, hopefully with a 1-0 record, going for a 2-0 record in district play. We'll be right back here in just a minute with the keys to the game on the Oklahoma Sports Network. for more than just a job? Forest Foods in Lawton offers a career with a competitive starting wage, opportunity for advancement, life and health insurance, including medical, dental, and vision, as well as 401k retirement plan. At Forest, you can be proud of a company that gives back to the community. But most of all, you can take pride from making a quality product. Forest Foods, making the best tasting hot dogs and smoked sausages, the food America likes to eat. So come be a part of a winning team and start your path to success today. Do you suffer from knee or hip pain? Stop hurting and start moving with Mako Partial Knee and Total Hip Replacement. Comanche County Memorial Hospital is proud to be the first and only in Southwest Oklahoma to offer this minimally invasive technology. Surgeons perform procedures with a Mako Robotic Arm Assistant for accurate implant placement customized just for you. The result is improved surgical outcome, minimal hospitalization, rapid recovery, and relief from pain. To see if Mako is right for you, call us today. Nobody moves more real estate than Pam and Barry's team. And that's why our clients keep coming back to us. We had some friends that recommended the Pam and Barry team and they exceeded all of our expectations. Our home sold in three days. It was a wonderful and easy experience. And we would love to help you. So follow the signs of Pam and Barry's team at Remax at 248-8800. We're, we're not bragging, bragging we're, we're just, just applying for a job. 
Bridges and Buckner Dentistry. At 1802 Northwest 52nd Street has over 32 years of combined experience. They serve Southwest Oklahoma for implant placement and final restorations using guided surgery and CEREC technology. This enables them to do same day crowns in the office. Call to set up your appointment today or visit them online at bridgesandbucknerdentistry.com. Want to take the stress out of your next remodel or building project? Comanche Home Center can deliver all the lumber, supplies, and tools right to you. When you're done, they'll pick up anything you don't use and give you credit towards your next project. Give Comanche Home Center a call today for a free estimate. Here at Carpet One, we have a great selection of carpet, hardwood, vinyl, tile, laminate, and area rugs. With all this, you're sure to find exactly what you want for your home. Come browse our exclusive selection or give Carpet One at Comanche Home Center a call today for a free estimate. back here in Cash, Oklahoma on the Oklahoma Sports Network as we get set for kickoff here in about 23 minutes. Uh, I think we're honoring the veterans tonight here in Cash. Also, it's 80s night yep. here, and so um, we definitely want to thank our veterans for serving the country. Uh, it's a noble uh, sacrifice and effort that they give, so we appreciate all them, and uh, we know the families as well. You know, they uh, deal with a lot of sacrifice and being away from each other quite a bit, so we definitely want to thank them. And so um, before we get into this right now, we noticed the temperature went up a little bit today. It's been kind of kind of a little more fallish weather the last couple of weeks, and uh, now it's um, warmed up. The wind was blowing pretty strong out of the south earlier, and it's kind of let down a little bit. But, Vinny, what are the, the Lawton Heritage Pharmacy keys to the game? Well, on defense, they've got some big guys on the outside that they like to use a lot. Number 88, Peyton Toll, and number 7, Taylor Neem. Uh, one of the big things that Coach Griffin talked about is keeping them got, keeping those guys covered. Another thing that we've got to do is we've got to tackle better. We had some uh, missed tackles during plain view and things, so we got to do a better job of getting those guys to the ground on first contact and make sure that we tackle better. And then they run a lot of screens and things like that with their quarterback, Gray uh, Adams. He's also a good runner. So kind of that run screen game we got to put a put a bottle on that and make sure that we can stop that uh, that there on defense on offense the same thing almost every week when I talk to coach Griffin it's the same thing got to take care of the ball no turnovers none of th none of those type of mistakes and then we got to execute Hunter Glenn's got to do a good job of getting us into the right plays so if there's something that he doesn't like and doesn't like the way that it looks he does have the ability now as a senior to kind of make some checks and get out of some of those plays so he's got to do a good job tonight of getting us in and out of those good play getting us into getting us into good plays and out of bad play so that's a big thing on offense number three we got to improve the kickoff coverage game coach griffin said there was a lot of missed tackles during that and people were kind of getting outside of their lanes so we got to make sure that we stay in our lanes not have any long kickoff run kickoff runs and things obviously eli kicks the ball deep a lot of times so uh, get a little lackadaisical when it doesn't get all the way to the end zone so got to make sure you keep stay in those lanes and uh Make sure that when you have the opportunity, you bring that kick returner down to the ground. And then the last one that Coach Griffin kind of called himself out on was got to get Hunter Tate the ball. Last, uh, well, not last week, but two weeks ago during our last game against Plainview, uh, Coach talked about he only gave he only got Hunter the ball three times in some meaningful action. So he said he's got to do a better job of that and make sure that he gets the ball in his hands at some point during the game. So that's kind of the keys to the game. I think if we can ha uh, take care of all those keys, should walk out of here with a one and zero record. Record here in district play. Yeah, and I noticed that last game too, but I think part of the thing with Hunter, especially Hunter Tate, is that they were keying on him, and so they were really trying to stop the sweep, and really that's where his, you know, a lot of his yards are going to come from, right? Yeah, you're going to run, you're going to run into that. I mean, obviously he's one of our dynamic play playmakers, along with Kynell and some and Reed Lyon and some of those guys on the outside. But Hunter's kind of the guy that we like to get the ball to in space. So, got to do a better job now. The district plays rolling around to get him the ball a little bit more often. But if they're keying on him, hey, you got that. That's part of kind of one of those keys that we talked about, where Hunter Glenn's got to make sure to get the get the get us in and out of those bad plays and get us into those good plays and hey don't force the ball to anybody if somebody else is open then you got to get them the ball I know we want to focus on one person but hey at the end of the day you got to get it to the open man and make sure that uh, we take care of the ball and there's no turnovers when it comes to that yeah and this Bethany team they are one and two but they are 
a good one and two. I, you know, I like to, it's hard to say that for sure. But uh, they played Jones early in the year. Jones is uh, one of the best teams in 3A. They've got a couple of D1 players on their team. And then they also had to play John Marshall, who moved uh, up from 3A to 4A and has been really, really good this year as well. In fact, they just lost their first game uh, last night, I believe, uh, to Blanchard. Uh, and so, really, those are you know those two losses are not <laughs> – those are good teams that they lost to. Now, again, Bethany is a tradition-rich team, I believe. Now, don't quote me exactly on this. I don't think they've lost more than three games. I saw this uh, right before the beginning of the season. I think since, like, 2008 or 2009. And so, uh, tonight, if they were to lose, you know, that would be their third loss. And that just shows you how good they've been. And this coach that they have here, he has been there. He is just the – he's just there for – as the head coach now for the fourth year. His name is John Arthur, but he's been in the system for 14 years overall. I know you talked to Coach Griffin a little bit about their coaching, right? Yeah, I mean, he said, look, this is going to be a well-coached team. This is going to be, they're going to play us tough. They're going to play us, they're going to play us hard. They're going to play us well. So we need to make sure that, like I said, we take care of our own business. I think if we take care of our own business, we have some we have some size on them as far as on the interior. Uh, so I think we can potentially wear them down as the game goes on. On the outside, though, number 88 is a big old, what is he, 6'5", six, 6'7", six, something six, like seven, that. Yeah. Seven listed at about 6'5". Those guys play receiver on the outside, so they like to kind of put the ball up to those guys. And number 88 is a big defensive end for them as well, Peyton Tool, who comes off the edge pretty well. And, and that's one guy that we've got to key in for the offensive line and things like that. So, I mean, it's going to be a tough t challenge, but I think uh, the Cash Bulldogs are up for it. And... Uh, Get another district, get a district win under our belt, and see where we can go from here. We've got a good one in store for you here from Ulrich Stadium. That's your Lawton Heritage Pharmacy keys to the game. They make you feel glad you came in. Lawton Heritage Pharmacy two Northwest Sheridan Road. We'll be right back here in just a minute with the Splash Pools and Spas starting lineups. Want to take the stress out of your next remodel or building project? Comanche Home Center can deliver all the lumber, supplies, and tools right to you. When you're done, they'll pick up anything you don't use and give you credit towards your next project. Give Comanche Home Center a call today for a free estimate. Here at Carpet One, we have a great selection of carpet, hardwood, vinyl, tile, laminate, and area rocks. With all this, you're sure to find exactly what you want for your home. Come browse our exclusive selection or give Carpet One at Comanche Home Center a call today for a free estimate. Feet. We use them every day, working, playing, and usually taking them for granted. If your feet hurt, see the professionals at Southwest Foot and Ankle Clinic. They've been serving Southwest Oklahoma for the past 36 years, providing the highest quality care and combining the latest technology with old-fashioned Oklahoma compassion. With three locations to serve you, Lawton, Duncan, and Altus. Call today or visit us online at swokfoot.com. 4D Landscaping and Irrigation has been providing top-rated professional landscape and irrigation services for the past 25 years. They take your vision for that perfect landscaping project for your home, new construction, or business and make it a reality with their easy financing options. You'll want to make sure to ask them about their seasonal services too. 4D Landscaping and Irrigation. Call 510-9983. Becker Raybon Funeral Home has been serving the funeral needs of Southwest Oklahoma since 1940 and is owned by the Raybon family. We believe family ownership makes a great difference in the care and service your family receives. Their staff is eager to find ways to assist you. Whether it's with live streaming or benefit assistance, we can help. When it comes to measuring personal levels of service, there are other funeral homes, and then there is ours. Becker Raybon Funeral Home, 1502 Fort Sill Boulevard. At Bill Miller and Noble Heating and Air Conditioning, we take pride in our quality air conditioner and heater repair and replacement services, as well as providing the highest customer satisfaction. Bill Miller and Noble Heating and Air Conditioning has been serving Lawton and the surrounding area for over 25 years. We have the knowledge, equipment, and trained technicians to take care of all your heating and cooling needs. Give us a call. Bill Miller and Noble Heating and Air, 355-1811. We're back here on the Oklahoma Sports Network here. 
Vinny and Billy and all these people that you don't call us these names, you know. Uh, <laughs> my name is really William. His name is really Vincent. And, uh, I think Jake and Caleb. I don't think Jake's a Jacob. I don't know if he's a Jacob. He's just a Jake. And she got Caleb up there. <laughs> yeah, Chance. <laughs> don't call him Jake Chance. It's Jake Chance over here, producer extraordinaire, and Caleb Hannabass up there. Wanted to thank him for. Uh, getting up there on the camera. Uh, now we're back here with the Splash Pools and Spas starting line of Splash Pools and Spas. Let us show you the art of living well. 249 East Gore, call 353-6763. Splash Pools and Spas starting lineups. We'll start with the offense here um, tonight. Looking at the offense, really nothing has changed as we um, look through the offense here. Somebody I want to talk about, we talked about him a little bit throughout the year. We just doing the starting lineups. We just want to talk about players maybe we haven't mentioned a whole lot. Right. Again, I, I'm still, uh, I'm super impressed with George Harper. And I was talking to somebody actually uh, last week um, about George Harper. And I guess his brother was a pretty big athlete, from what I understand. Um, but this is really, he's just still learning how to play football. Yeah, he's still learning to play football. I mean, we've got a long way to go in the season. And he got some valuable experience those first three games. So looking forward to see how he does the rest of the year in that speed sweep receiver type position. Of course, Kynell Daniels, I think tonight, is going to be in for a big game. If yeah. they um, stick their big guy out there on the edge of his DN, you probably want to run away from him, right? Yeah, I think you're going to try and run away from them. I think you're also going to kind of trap in the inside. Uh, we're a little bit bigger than them on the front. So when we're bigger on the front side, you kind of want to make sure that you uh, push those guys off the ball and uh, look for a running game to kind of be a big plus for us tonight. And that's what happened last game against Plainview. They tried to stop that outside sweep and kind of almost had a 200-yard game. Yeah, just kind of busting up the middle there. When they're kind of focusing on the outside, focusing on Hunter, and, and like we talked about George Harper and things like that on those, you're kind of looking for those and making sure uh, kind of can hit that hole up the middle kind of with some of those traps. Look for us to kind of get in that T formation as well, kind of a heavy package for us uh, with Antonio Austin and Toms back there and uh, kind of. I think an interesting matchup could be Jalen Nido versus that big DN. <laughs> yeah. A couple of big boys out there. I'm kind of interested to, to, to see that one. We can move over to the defense now here on the defensive side. Of course, the defense the last two weeks, we've pitched shutouts, haven't we? Yeah, we sure have. It's been eight, eight, uh, eight uh, quarters in a row without a score for the defense there. So they've really stepped up. Gave up probably too many yards last week on some of those big long runs that they had. But as soon as they got in the end zone, as soon as they kind of got into that uh, red zone area, defense kind of bowed their, bowed their necks and uh, was able to stop them and keep them out of the end zone. So eight quarters in a row without a score. can't Nothing to sneeze at at all. So look for the big guys up front to get some pressure on that quarterback. Look, they run a ton of screens, and they right. like to throw the ball up to those big guys on the outside. So our corners, safeties, linebackers, those guys have got to have some big games tonight. And when you get into district play, really, everybody knows each other. Right now, right. Bethany is new to the district. They're here. new. They're coming yeah. out of 4A2 into 4A1 um, because we dropped Andarko. Andarko dropped down to 3A, and so Bethany moved up to 4A1 out of 4A2. But, but typically speaking, in the district, you're going to be pretty familiar with every team and what they run, right? Yeah, especially when they've got kind of the same coaching staff in place and, and same system in place so you kind of know what's going on this one's a little bit different than, than your Weatherford and Clinton and Elgin and some of those guys because they are new to the district but they've been known for throughout 4A for a long time now so coach uh, knows a lot about them knows a lot about their coaching staff so I think we got a good game plan in place and I think like I said if we can uh, wear on them as the game moves on I think we'll take over in the fourth quarter and uh, take this one home and, of course, our defensive line has been very good all year, winning the battle up front. Typically every game they've been doing that. If they run a lot of screens here, yes. you're going to be – uh, there's going to be a lot of – we talk about assignment football all the time, right? And sometimes your assignment is not necessarily uh, chasing the ball. I've, uh, I'm not going to get into, you know, <laughs> little kid sports, but, uh, you know, a lot of times, especially, you know, younger kids, they want to chase the ball. And, right. Um, in a screen game, you have got to be – uh, disciplined. Uh, I was. I heard a story. Uh, Jerry Clower, uh, comedian uh, from the South, from many years ago, was telling a story about when he played football, and he said that he said there was this this time I was on the defensive line and. And they ran a screenplay. He said, I didn't know it was a screenplay, and they let me free. And I thought they just couldn't handle me. <laughs> and uh, he said, and they just, he said, I got cracked back by somebody on a screen. And, you know, the screens, they look like that. And so uh, they, you can appear like the floodgates have opened up, and you've got a free shot at somebody. And all of a sudden, uh, there's a whole lot of blockers to the side, and they're going free. So assignment football and defense will be really, really big. But we've been good there all year. So yeah. I'm, I'm really excited again to see, I think, because as we get in, the reason I brought up the uh, familiarity with the other teams in the district is because. Um, your offense, once you get in district play, people know your offense. Right. Mo mo most likely your games are going to be lower scoring. Of course, turnover and things are going to play a big part in that. But just overall, I mean, typically the games are going to be lower scoring. And so when your offense can't score, your defense has to be on point. Yeah, there's 
no doubt about that. I mean, they know who your playmakers are. They know the style of offense that you run. They know that some of the plays that you run, some of the formations and things like that. Uh, so that's going to be that's going to be difficult. But as we move forward throughout the season, I mean, I, like I said, I mean, I think that uh, we've got a good game plan coming into this one. I think that a way of our the way our offense operates with so many different sets, with so much moving parts, so many mo motions and things like that, I think we'll be fine as we move forward because there's so many wrinkles that we can have from all those plays. So. Look forward to this one tonight and see what happens from here. Eli Angel too. We got to talk about a little bit of yeah. Eli Angel. We we talked about him the last couple of games. He's the he's the kicker, <laughs> but he's not just a kicker. No, he's a Swiss Army knife. Yeah, yeah he, he does everything. He's that stat sheet stuffer here in football. He, you know, he the plays. old Cordell Stewart slash. Oh, oh man, oh yeah, yeah. So that's, well, that's taking it back a little bit. <laughs> New yeah. Orleans is own. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, going back to the Colorado days and Pittsburgh Steeler days. Cordell Stewart was one of those guys. And, right. Um, Eli Angel's been doing a really good job with that all year. That's your. Splash Pools and Spas starting lineup. Splash Pools and Spas, let us show you the art of living well. We're about nine minutes away from kickoff here in Cash, Oklahoma, on the Oklahoma Sports Network, and we'll be right back with you in just a minute. Wayne Strike. Drive in in Lawton, a tradition since 1950, with two great locations at number 7 Northwest Sheridan Road and Wayne's 2 at 6810 Northwest Cash Road, serving the same old fashioned hamburgers you know and love and grew up with. Maybe it's Wayne's famous steak fingers, or maybe you're in the mood for a sissy cheeseburger, chicken sandwich, salad, pizza, or just an order of onion rings. And don't forget Wayne's famous sweet tea or cherry limeade. Cruise on in before or after the game. Wayne's, number 7 Northwest Sheridan Road and 6810 Northwest Cash Road. Let's go to Wayne's! to start cracking it, cooking it, buttering it, grilling it, baking it, brewing it. McDonald's fires up the grill every morning so you can start digging in and enjoying it and saving with the mix and match deal. Choose from sausage McMuffin with egg, bacon egg and cheese biscuit, or bacon egg and cheese McGriddles, two for just $4. Add any size soft drink for just a buck. Make your morning routine a little better. Since 1908, Cameron University has served students from all over the world. With nearly 50 degrees in two-year, four-year, and graduate programs, we have something to inspire you. Health and wellness facilities plus a wide variety of clubs and activities will help you find your perfect fit. Small class sizes allow you to be yourself while discovering your future potential as part of the Aggie family. Come experience the Axe. Enroll today at www.cameron.edu. We know exactly what winter is like around here. A furnace tune-up by one hour heating and air conditioning can fix little problems before they become big trouble. The way I see it, you'll stay warm all winter. Oh, you can see the future. Nope, but I do see a furnace with a long productive life, and you might get a lower power bill. Positive energy, I like it. What's not to like? Right now, get a $59 furnace tune-up. Your comfort is just a call away. Call Welcome back here to the Oklahoma Sports Network. You're watching Cash Bulldogs football. We're about five minutes away from kickoff here. I'm going to look at the scoreboard. No, of course, no games underway yet, but 
Uh, we want to uh, take a look at the, what's going to happen tonight. We have Weatherford traveling to Chickasha. And by the way, the Cash Bulldogs, Cash Bulldogs are number five now. Uh, okay. We have moved up to number five. Uh, Wagner is now the number one team in the state. So there's been a little bit of shuffling around at the top there. Not Weatherford any, two now? Weatherford's number two okay. now. So number two, Weatherford 3-0 and travels to Chickasha. That's going to be interesting. Should be a good one. game, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we'll follow that one for you because that's a – it's a district game, so we want to pay attention to that. Uh, Miami plays Bristol, 0 and 3 versus 1 and 2 team. Clinton uh, and Elgin. Yeah, Clinton and Elgin is going to be one that we want to pay attention to. Um, I'm interested to see what Elgin does. Actually, last week Elgin traveled to Tecumseh last week, and for a half they don't. We saw Tecumseh last year in the first round of the playoffs, and they lost a few players, but. Uh, Elgin actually started a freshman quarterback last yeah, week. Yeah, they're young. They're young across the board. It's freshman and sophomore. It's kind of across the board for those guys. So um, getting some valuable experience this year may take their lumps as the season moves forward, but could uh, set them up pretty for the next couple years leading forward. But they actually was in, they were in that game. Uh, yeah. Halftime, they were they were leading. I think halftime, 19-16, to 16, uh, they uh, ended up losing that game. But definitely some positives there. They've had some uh, taking some lumps. But uh, those kids will definitely grow up there, you know, sophomores and freshmen especially. We also have uh, last night. Uh, John Marshall, like I mentioned, played Blanchard. John Marshall was number six. Blanchard's number nine. John Marshall uh, loses that game at home. Their home uh, opener in 4A, District 2, 46-33 to to Blanchard. That's a big win uh, for Blanchard. Sky Took's playing Katusa tonight. Sky Took is number seven. And really, uh, the number one Wagner team uh, in 4A3. Their only challenger is probably Sky Took, and so they have given them fits over the years. And uh, that should be an interesting one when it comes down to, uh, to that game at some point. Broken Bow uh, plays Steelwell. Um, this Bethany JV team last night played uh, Mount St. Mary's. It's always nice for those JV guys to get yeah. some games right there. Yeah, because I mean, one of the issues we've had kind of so far this year, Coach Griffin talked a little bit about it. Some of our JV games have gotten canceled. We, I think we had one scheduled against Duncan we didn't get to get in. We had um, another one scheduled against, I can't remember who, but wasn't able to get it in. So uh, good to see some of those JV guys at least getting some games in because right now, I mean, that – that's uh, unfortunate for those guys. They practice all year. They lead into the season, hoping they get to their time to shine. And not obviously on the varsity games, but they get those Monday games where they can shine a little. But uh, unfortunately, some of those, because of this pandemic and yeah. everything that's going on, has been pushed to the side a little. But uh, at, the, at the end of the day, the big ones are on Friday night, and that's yeah. what we're here for tonight. Defending state champion Poto, they've got to a one and two start to the year. They're, but they're number four still, so the coaches yeah. think quite a bit of them. They're they're at home tonight against Hilldale. That's a number four versus number eight, so that's a big game. Tecumseh and Ada. Um, Tecumseh two and one. Ada's had the issue too with with the COVID. Um, not necessarily their school, but the, their opponents, and so they've only played two games so far. Now, with something we haven't talked a whole lot about, we mentioned early in the broadcast. So here's how it's going to work. If you guys don't know this, I've, I've, I've talked to some people over the week. Um, there is, I believe, a rule to where they could play two games in a week if they chose to if yes. the game gets canceled. Yes. Uh, but what's what's going to happen most likely is is that it's going to go down as a no contest. Now yeah. they can choose. A lot of times if teams have the off weeks, the same off week, they can uh, they can shuffle things around and make that work uh, to some degree. But likely what's going to happen is it's going to be a no contest. And so district play basically is just going to go off winning percentage. And so it's very likely. Um, this is going to be interesting to see how this all plays out. Yeah, at some point during the year, I mean, we may unfortunately miss a game. Next week, our game's on Saturday rather than Friday night to give uh, Newcastle an extra day of practice because those guys I don't think can either practice until either Tuesday Wednesday. or Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. Uh, so that gives them an extra day of practice so that way we can get the game in. Tonight, Elgin is playing Clinton when they were scheduled to play Elk City. Elk City and Newcastle have kind of taken the week off. I think they're going to try and play that weekend. Um, they're going to try and play later on in the year so they can everybody can have the same amount of amount of uh, district games. But possibly it might not happen that way. So they're going to kind of base it off of a win percentage type deal uh, and things like that. So that's going to be that's going to be an interesting of how that continues to play and how that affects potentially the playoff race and playoff seedings and things. Yeah, and we're just this is just the first week of district, so we've got <laughs> we've got yeah we got a long several way to weeks, go. Yeah, right. several weeks left, and we've all you know we've already seen this COVID having um, and schools are being safe. There's nothing wrong with no that. no no. Um, and so, you know, they're, they're doing the best. The high school, OSA, they're doing the best they can to figure out what to do because uh, this is something they've never faced, obviously, you know, playing high school football in a pandemic. This is a, a very, <laughs> very new thing to uh, – there's maybe generations that dealt that in the past, but uh, as of now, this is a new thing for us. And so it's going to be interesting to see how that all plays out. And, I, you know, I, I talked to a couple coaches uh, in 4A the last week as well, and I just said, you know, basically flat out asked them, I said, you know, is, is it possible that somebody tries to take advantage of this just because um, it could happen, right? And so It could. Um, now, I, I don't know how um, 
OSSAA is going to deal with that. I'm sure um, they've got some rules in place that we just don't know about uh, to make sure that nobody cheats the system because it could very you could very easily just the way I think it's set up cheat the system. And so we don't want that happening, obviously, but you do want people to stay safe. And so uh, hopefully none of that happens. Hopefully we just have a normal high school football season, <laughs> a, a normal district season to where we get a real champ. I know a lot of colleges are still dealing with it now. In fact, you know, colleges are some of them now, like big, the Big Ten Conference is coming on board. And yeah, Pac-12 came. I think they're yeah. coming on board and sometimes in November and playing seven games. So, yeah, it's interesting to kind of see how everybody's handling this. I mean, Notre Dame and Wake Forest game got postponed this week. Uh, so everybody's trying to make the best of it and do what they can and hopefully get a full season in so that way these kids, uh, they've worked so hard, they look forward to these Friday nights, and we want to get as many in as we can, and hopefully we can get them all in. Yes, we have both teams set to run onto the field here in just a second as the pregame clock has run down. They're showing 12 minutes there on the scoreboard here for the – the first quarter as we get that started, man, as the Cash Bulldogs run onto the field for their 4A1 district opener against the Bethany Broncos. Again, a good cast crowd uh, despite the mask and the social distancing. The crowd, I've, I've been super impressed with the Cash crowd anywhere we've been, whether it's been home oh, or yeah. on the road. They uh, they show out in numbers. They uh, they love this team here. That's something that's interesting about small communities to me. And you know, 4A is not super small by any means, but but they show up for their team. And this is you know, yeah. I said there's nothing to do in cash, but this is what you do on Friday night. On Friday nights, yeah. I mean, heck, heck, even those first couple games in El Reno and Altus, we kind of uh, out uh, out. Uh, outfanned them yeah, there yeah. at their own places. So it's uh, good to see the community behind these guys. It always helps when they're winning and kind of keeping things rolling. Uh, and right now, Cash is on the on the trend up as far as uh, statewide programs. So Coach Griffin has this thing rolling right now and building a real good program here. So, of course, the community is going to be here to back it up and follow it. So, But, hey, winning at the end of the day is always – gets more people in the stands. So we want to keep winning and keep doing those things. And so we get set for our Wayne's drive-in kickoff. Come on, everyone. Let's go, go to Wayne's. Wayne's. Yeah, I also want to thank our first quarter sponsor, Vincent Sailor State Farm. Hey. Like a good neighbor, Vincent Sailor State Farm is there. You can call Vincent at 580-699-2771. You can talk cash football with him. You can talk insurance with him. You can talk LSU football oh, with yeah. him if you want to. You can talk Season opener, baby. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. <laughs> Defending champs. Uh, you can talk New Orleans Saints football with him. He's a uh, he's all about that stuff. You can call him for your insurance needs. He'll get you hooked up here. As we get set for the Wayne's drive-in kickoff, Eli Angel will kick this game off. The Bethany Broncos will receive to start this game. We'll see if the cash defense can pick up where they've left off for the last uh, several uh, eight quarters, I guess. Now, yeah, eight quarters in a row without a score there. And let's see how this kickoff team does. This is one of the keys to the game. Coach right. was not very happy with the way. Uh, the coverage teams played uh, against Plainview. So something to look at here, see if Eli gets it in the end zone. And if not, let's see if these guys keep their lanes and uh, cover for a short yardage uh, return here. As Eli Angel kicks it off. It's going to be another nice deep kick. It's going to go yep. into the end zone for a touchback. And the wind is coming out of the south, southwest. Uh, so just, it's not as strong as it was earlier. And so uh, Eli Angel doesn't need any extra wind, obviously. But he puts that one in the end zone like he's been doing so often. And the cash defense comes out onto the field. It's, Got jump around playing in the background. Uh, it's 80s night, but we got music from all decades. Oh yeah, Skeeter over there. Skeeter, Skeeter. DJ Skeeter in the house. Keeps tonight. it, keeps it, keeps it exciting here in yeah. Alder Stadium. The Bethany Broncos. Yeah, out. you're gonna see them in a spread kind of uh, a spread type of offense. They kind of like to get the ball outside on the outside to number seven and number 88, and a lot of screens and the quarter, a lot of quarterback runs. It's Gray Adams at quarterback. He throws a out pass. It's going to be incomplete there. Pass intended for number 85, Jared Malaska. Well, another thing to kind of look at throughout these games, they throw a lot of these short passes in these screens. So one thing that uh, the referees potentially need to focus on is kind of the blocking downfield. A lot of times they get the ball out quick, but when they do, they're, some of those guys are blocking downfield. So uh, something, something that was pointed out to the referees before the game. Get a run again, number 21 in the backfield. That's Jaden Gilliland. Yeah, just kind of a quick little uh, outside zone run there on, on out of the spread formation and picks up decent yardage. Brings up a third and manageable. This would be a big stop to get him on a three and out right here. Yeah, third, and very short, too. As you mentioned in pregame, a couple of big, big guys. Yeah, on the outside, those yeah. guys are tall and big and. Gill in the backfield with Gray Adams at quarterback. 
Got some uh, I think that's off front. sides there. Yeah. Kind of an illegal snap. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to watch uh, Jalen Nido and, number, and uh, Mr. Tool here for uh, Bethany, 88 and 44. Uh, going to be interesting to watch those two guys kind of go at it. They both kind of play tight end, both play receiver. So they'll kind of be matched up throughout the night at, on certain certain opportunities. So I make it a third down and seven now. Kind of going with an empty set, it looks yeah. like almost. Yeah. Jaden Gill land out, to split out to the left. He was in the backfield. Now you got five wide here. As Gray Adams gets the snap, throws Quick another slam out to number 33. Nice tackle there. Pass caught by Jocelyn Malaska. Yeah, great job by Reed Lyon to kind of make that open field tackle there. Unfortunately, it was enough to pick up the first down. Kind of just some stop routes and gets it out of his hand quick there and was able to get enough yardage for the first down. So Bethany does pick up the first, first down of the game here. 11.04 left in the first quarter. You'll land again in the backfield with Gray Adams. Yeah, they're spread, but they're not necessarily a quick – so nice little uh, handoff up the yeah. middle there to number 33. And fortunately, he's tackled and pushed out of bounds by Carlos Harbin. But another first down for Bethany. Yeah, kind of a speed sweep type play there, but it was a pitch. So it actually goes down as a pass. But uh, kind of a, didn't see any running room to the outside there where the play was designed to go. But great cutback by him to get some big yardage there and keep them on the field. Gilland offset slightly behind Gray Adams, a quarterback, out to the far side of the field. We've got an interesting little setup over there. The ball is going to go up the middle. There's going to be a flag here, typically where a hold yeah. is called. That's usually on the side of the ball, on the side where a hold is going to be called. So that will bring them back and make it a second and long. So Bethany, two first downs early in this game on this drive, and now they're going to be pushed back here. Yeah, it looks like we're going to push him back, though. Kind of. Oh, it's going to be against Cash. Okay. Interesting call there, but uh, it's going to give them a little bit more field position. And so, like we said, this Bethany team is not a slouch. They may come in with a losing record early in the season, but there's a lot of teams in the past. I've seen Carl Albert teams, and Carl Albert's a tradition-rich team here in the state of Oklahoma, uh, lose two or three, four games sometimes start the season because they play bigger schools or whatever and then go off and win the state, you know, so. Yeah, I mean, with the way that the uh, playoff system is set up in Oklahoma high school football, I mean, those first three games, I mean, yes, they count. You want to win every game you play, but some coaches like to tinker and figure out who they have and what's their best style of play, and, so, so sometimes they're kind of figuring out who they are at that point. Once you get the district, you start rolling. Another little quick pass, incomplete, intended again for number 85, Jerry Malaska. Same play we saw first play of the game. Yeah, they try to get the ball out of out of out of his hands quick. Oh yeah. Uh, if he doesn't if he doesn't kind of see his first receiver, a lot of times he takes off. He's a little bit more of a runner than a passer. But uh, and they like to throw those short kind of dink and dunk passes. They like to do some rub routes, uh, quote unquote pick plays, uh, and a lot of screens. So. It's going to be a tough task for us all night, but uh, see what we can do as the game moves forward here. Get to push on the front end a bit. It will help us a lot. Ebby Lechtenberg now in the backfield. That's number nine with number 21, Jaden Gilliland. The handoff is to Gilliland. Got a little bit of room. Able Picks to get another first, first down. Yeah. Third first down of the, of the game. Is yeah. Drive. Good job by Patty Aker there to kind of bust through the line, but uh, was able to be a little shifty there and move around him and pick up the first down there. Nice opening drive by the Bethany Broncos here and start this game, doing what most teams have not been able to do on cash so far, put, put together a solid drive. Now, this has happened a little bit where they've been able to get down inside, uh, you know, 30 to 20-yard line or so, but they usually stall out there. So we'll see here um, if Bethany uh, has the same fate or what they can do here. As Gray Adams gets the snap, and, oh, There's man, Jalen Jalen right there. Dido all over him. Big loss on the play. Yeah, great job by Jalen right there. Kind of came untouched. Might have been a missed blocking assignment, I would assume. Usually you don't want to leave that guy free. Uh, but uh, was able to uh, not bite on the fake there and get right back there to the quarterback and bring up a big sack there. So that makes it second and very long. We talk about that all the time when we're on offense. It's the last thing you want as an offense to be in a second and long. You know, number 88, their big guy, he's listed as a tight end, but they've had him spread out. He's not, they're not even lining up you know, on the line. 
very rarely do they line them up on the line. Yeah. They're, they're a spread type team, and they like to throw him the ball. They're looking down that way right now. Oh. Nice job by Hunter Tate to knock that ball away. Third down and long yeah, great coverage there on the back end by all the all the defensive players, and good job by Hunter there to get his hand on the ball and block it down. Brings up a third and a very long, as you can hear the Cash Faithful getting excited and stomping their feet. Got a little dong going on now. A third and 15 for the Bethany Broncos. His quarterback Gray Adams looks to the sideline for the play. Yeah, they're a spread team and, and kind of a no-huddle team, but they're not. They're very deliberate in their play call. They're not necessarily a, hey, let's rush to the line and get a bunch of plays in. They're kind of deliberate even though they don't huddle. He looks back, throws it up for grabs. Number seven, Taylor Heim, not able to make the catch. Nice job by the cash defense. Yeah, great job there after those big plays there. But uh, – See what we do here. Fourth and very long. You would think they'd punt it and kind of play the field position game here, but they're holding them out there for a little while. They got some size advantage on the outside, so maybe they'll try and just chunk it up there and see what happens. Yeah, I, I uh, would kind of say that might be a play we see quite often here as a <laughs> number seven, six, five is going to have a yeah. height advantage over our secondary, but they're going to go for it. No, a little, quick, a little kick quick kick. Kick. It's a short out of the way. A lot of people doing that nowadays, and it works. Fairly well. It's going to be inside the 20, and Cash will get the ball from their own 19-yard line to start their first offensive drive of the game. Yeah, usually your quarterback is one of your better athletes on your team, so he has the ability to kind of quick kick it out of there. You're seeing that more and more in high school ball these days because it gives them the opportunity if they like to match up on the outside to throw it, and if they don't, hey, just kick it and let's kick it down there and make them go the long field. And usually the defensive team has to play that safe. Right. They put a returner back there. So right. So, yeah, you're not looking at any returns or anything like that. And they, a lot of times people will do that within their own 35, 40-yard line. See what the offense comes out here in. Talked about a little pregame. Looks like they're lining up in that heavy package with the with T-style the T, T formation in the backfield. Yeah, and the handoff will be to number 41, Andrew Toms. Gain of about four on the play. Yeah, we have a little bit of a size advantage on the inside there with our offensive line. So look for those guys. I mean, look for those guys to push those guys off the ball and kind of lean on those guys and uh, see if we can create some big holes for Kynell and, and Antonio Austin and Toms and those guys throughout the game. Did see number 88 there on the tackle. Peyton Toll for the Bethany Broncos. Line up on the bottom of your screen as a defensive end as Hunter Glenn gets the snap and hands it off to Kynell Daniels. Not much doing there. No. Stacked no. up at the line. Yeah, you're going to see that. 88 going to line up on the outside kind of as a, as a defensive end slash outside linebacker. When we line up in that T formation, I assume a lot of times we're going to run away from him, uh, make him kind of get tired on the outside there, chasing the ball all night, and, and then having to uh, get back on the offensive side and try and play receiver. Third and five for the Cash Bulldogs with 8-10 left in the first quarter. Bring kind of our normal package back in here. Let's see what we go to on this play. Long back kind of nails George Harper in motion. Hunter Glenn puts Harper back in motion again. The handoff. Oh, there he in. goes. He has a lot of room on the outside. And he's going to go all the way, it looks like. Goodbye, horses. Kynell Daniels. <laughs> Woo! With the 75 yard touchdown run for the Cash Bulldogs. Put the Cash Bulldogs on the board first. Yeah, kind of a misdirection there. Kind of uh, brought him in motion to see how they lined up. Caught, looked over to the Hunter looked over the sideline. Coach Griffin made the check there, faked the speed sweep to George, and uh, gave it to Kynell. And see you later. Yeah, execution on that play was beautiful. Well, that was one of the things that we were kind of getting burned with two weeks ago against Plainville. We're kind of yeah. running away from where the motion and things were going. That's kind of what we did right there. Defensive end on this side, kind of bought on the. Bought the uh, speed sweep action, and nobody was there, and Kynell was off to the races, and when he's off to the races, not many people are going to catch him. That's right. So Eli Angel comes in to kick the extra point. A little low, low kick, but, but it's going to be it. good. Oh, Cast Bulldogs lead this one 7 to nothing. 7 for two left in the first quarter. We'll be right back here in just a minute on the Oklahoma Sports Network. calling that's kept us free. It's a place to belong. What's the calling? It's doing a job that makes a difference. Serving your community and your country. 
Lakes part-time service, where the impact is full-time. What's your calling? Air Force Reserve. Back here on the Oklahoma Sports Network, the Cast Bulldogs strike first. Now lead this one seven to zero. We're getting ready for another Wayne's Drive-In kickoff. Come on, everyone, let's go to Wayne. We thank you for watching us wherever you watch us from tonight. Whether you watch us on OKSportsNet.com or you watching us on one of the many platforms or the apps that's out there, we thank you for joining us. I know this year has been a, a good year for the Oklahoma Sports Network. We had a lot of viewers, and we welcome you uh, to this broadcast. Ask you to pass us on, share us with your friends. Also, you can go to the the Facebook page. We've got a lot of things going on there, especially the Cast Bulldog has their own fan page as Eli Angel gets set to kick this one off here. Now leading this game 7 to nothing early again. 7.42 left in the first quarter. See if he can put this one in the end zone like he's been doing so often. A little low this time and they are going to receive it about the three yard line and return it. Got a lot of room on the outside. He cuts it back to the middle and he's tackled at about the 36 yard line. Yeah, those low kicks right there, I mean, they get to the returner fairly quickly, so it's a little bit makes it a little bit tough on the uh, on the kickoff team to get down there. So if you're not going to get it through the back of the end zone, want to make sure that you kind of get a little bit more air to get your guys all the way down there. But Eli's done a great job all year, just kind of came off the side of his foot, looked like on that one, and gives them decent field position to start this drive. That was number 89, Francisco Fomero, the 5'10 senior for cash on the tackle. That's Gray Adams comes back out to run this Bethany offense, which drove the ball down the field last time, but stalled out the Cash Bulldog territory. He takes the ball. He's going to throw it out quick to number seven, the big guy. Nice job again the tackle, but it's a nice gain on the play. Yeah, that's somebody that they love to get the ball to on the outside. Taylor Neem there. He's got a bunch of catches for the year. Uh, him and 88 is kind of who they look to focus to. Uh, 80, him and 88 line up on the same side a lot of times and block for each other in some of those screen games and things. That was a simple hitch. Uh, George was able to come up, though, and make the tackle on the outside to not gain any extra yards there. Bring up a second and two, and they fake the handoff up the middle again. The pass to number nine, who's got some room, but ducks it all the way in to side. Catch Bulldog 44-yard line. That's what we were talking about, kind of their screen game there. That They've got three receivers on that side. They picked the most open one. That was the one in the middle there. The two outside, the inside and outside receiver there blocked their guy, and you're just trying to get positive yards there, and they were able to do that, pick up another first down. 7-10 left in the first quarter. That's Gilliland behind Adams in the backfield. Adams gets the snap, another quick pass out to the same Great receiver, play right number there. nine, Evie Lechtenberg, but he is stopped by George Harper. Yeah, great job by George there to kind of fight off the block of, no, of number seven and come up there and make the big open field tackle. He's looking a lot better. I mean, the first game, kind of probably some first game jitters and things, and was playing again, playing up against El Reno, had some good receivers on the outside, a great quarterback. So maybe, maybe eyes were a little, little wide that first game, but now that he's got three games under his belt, he's running the ball a lot better, and on the outside he's really playing a good cornerback spot for us. He'll land in behind Adams. Adams takes the snap, hands it off to Gilland, cuts it back, nice cut back. Yeah. Able to get another first down all the way down to the 30-yard line. Yeah, great job by him right there, finding the hole. Kind of defensive had some penetration there, but he was able to find a hole on the cutback lane, and nobody was there to stop him, and big run there to get a first down. I think maybe something we're seeing too is with these big receivers, you have to you have to pay attention to them. Yeah. And it's so that, that up the middle stuff may be a little more open than um, it usually is. Well, that's their plan right there. I mean, they line up in the spread formation to count the number of players in the box. There's five people in the box. There's five offensive linemen. They're probably going to run the ball. There's six people in the box. They're going to go. And they're only five offensive linemen. They're going to go on the outside with the matchup on the outside. So that's that's one of the reasons why a lot of teams are going to this spread offense these days. It's all about numbers and it's all about matchups. So if there's five in the box, you're going to run it because you got a you got a hat on a hat. If there's six in the box, you're going to look on the outside and see whether or not you've got two. If you've got two receivers out there, out there, and if there's only one DB, you're going to throw to that side. If there's two on that side, you're going to go that side too. You'll land with the short run, bring up a second and eight as Adams carry call carry out to the left side, but he is swarmed after a gain of about four yards. Yeah, just a normal quarterback sweep right there. Get, got some positive yards, brings up a third and short. One thing Coach Griffin was a little bit worried about during the week is he he's a little shifty back there, and he runs the ball fairly well. So that was probably his first run of the game, yeah, designed run for sure. Um, so look for him to kind of take off a few different times throughout the game. Ah, got us right there. Yeah, I see. Uh, Cheap first down, unfortunately. Happens. 
we do it to the other side. So just kind of kind of hold your water right there. And some guys are, you know, I noticed that too. Some guys are really really good at that, aren't they? Calling people offside. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's kind of a it's kind of an art. You got to be careful. You can't really <laughs> yeah. you can't really go too hard because then they'll uh, call the uh, offsides on the quarterback. But yeah. good job of kind of giving a little flinch there of his hands and. Uh, Unfortunately, we weren't looking at the ball as defense line and listening to his voice and jumped off sides and gave them the cheap, easy first down. So both of the big guys now off the field for Bethany as Gilland is in the back with Adams. Adams gets set for the snap, looks over to the sideline again. Either Toll nor uh, the other big fella in there, Heim. Yeah, right here, like I said, it kind of get up to the line, see how the defense is lined up, look over to the sideline, make a check. Kind of like we were talking about, there's people in the box. They're going to run it. If there's not, they're going to keep it on the outside and toss it out there. A hand off to Gilliland, and I think he loses one on the play. Nice job by the cash defense. Yeah, great job by the defensive end there. And Patty Aker himself, Jalen Nido, kind of holding those the offensive linemen up and letting those other guys get to the ball and make a tackle for a little bit of lost yardage. So, again, what we're seeing here is, you know, teams drive the field you know, pretty well, and then they get down to the 30, 20-yard line, almost to the red zone, and, uh, the cash defense is really good about stepping up when they need to, and they need to do it right here. Four minutes left in the first quarter with the 7 to nothing lead as Gray Adams. Looks like he's going to go up under center this time. It's very Gil rare. <laughs> yeah, Gilliland right, lined up deep behind him. It's going to be a fake to him, and it's going to be another pass out to the side. Nice job by Hunter Tate all over that one. That's number nine, Eppie Lechtenberg on the catch for Bethany. Yeah, great job by Hunter there to not be uh, influenced by the uh, play fake there. Stay on his guy, keep his assignment, and as soon as he was able to catch the ball, was able to come up with a big tackle. That'll bring up a third and seven. That's another third and long situation for Bethany here. Well, again, neither of the big fellows in here for Bethany. Gilland in the back though with Adams. Three receivers to the left and one at the bottom of your screen. Adams takes the ball and throws oh. the ball deep. Nice play, but just uh. overthrows it a little bit. Had a man open, just overthrew him. Yeah, kind of a wheel route right there. George kind of got himself looking in the backfield and not as a receiver. Kind of thought he was going to stay on that out route, but then turned it up upfield for the wheel route. But a little bit overthrown there, so lucky for the Bulldogs to bring up this field goal attempt. It will be a 32-yard attempt here against the wind. We weren't kicking as well going this way during warm-ups either school. So see what happens right here. you got an athlete back there as the holder. So there's the snap. It's going to be a kick. Kick is up, and it looks to be good, good. and it is good. Bethany on the scoreboard. Cash now leads this one 7-3. to three. We'll be right back here in just a minute on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Looking for an opportunity to advance in the workplace? Republic Paperboard Company in Lawton, Oklahoma offers competitive wages as well as excellent benefits. Republic is a quality producer of paperboard products used in the manufacturing of gypsum wallboard with advanced technology and a committed staff and makes them one of the premier paperboard companies in the U.S. using 100% recycled paper fiber. Republic Paper partners with many local organizations to build a better community. Go to republicpaperboard.com. We're back here on the Oklahoma Sports Network with Cash Bulldogs. Now lead this one 7-3 over the Bethany Broncos as we get set for another Wayne's drive-in kickoff. Come on, everyone. Let's go to Wayne. Two locations in Lawton, 7 Southwest Sheridan, 68-10 Cash. Thank you for their support here. As the scoreless streak is broken. Yeah, eight quarters. Can't uh, nothing to sneeze at there. So we can now say it's eight quarters without a nine, almost nine quarters now without a touchdown. <laughs> yeah. So we still got a little, little something a little to play bit. for there. Yeah. But uh, like I said, the defense does a great job. They kind of give up some yardage, this, that, and the other. But as they as they get closer to that end zone and the team, the opposite team starts smelling an end zone, they're kind of bend the bolos necks up a little and uh, have to do a good job of stopping them and keeping them to no points. Bethany gets set to kick this one off. We got number five, Braden Castro. I know they like his speed. He's in the back there with uh, George Harper. Yeah, they love his speed back there when he gets his hands on the ball. So looks like a little squib kick there. Let it go out of bounds. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's going to go out of bounds. Going to give us great field position to start this drive. 
That's no, I think he – look, looks like Coach Griffin's going to make him kick it kick again. It again. <laughs> you know, that's a – that's one way to do it. <laughs> yeah, that's not a bad. They're not a bad idea. There, you, you have uh, yeah, maybe he sees faith. Yeah. yeah, you've got faith in your guys back there. I mean, right. we've got a ton of speed back there with Reed Lyon kind of as an up man here. We got George Harper back there, Hunter Tate, Castro in the back. So, and here's another thing too. They just ran all the way down there. So that now this kickoff team's a little bit tired. That's a great point. And when uh, so you just basically had to make a seventy yard sprint. And now you got to do it all over again. So a little huffing and puffing. A lot of coaches like to do that. And let's see if it pays off for the Cash Bulldogs here. Three twelve left here in the first quarter. Cash leads this one with a seventy five yard Tyneel Daniels touchdown. And Bethany just added a field goal here. As Bethany runs another player onto the field. <laughs> let's kick off. This Wayne's driving in. Kick off. Wayne's driving. Come on, everyone. Let's go, go to, to Wayne's. Wayne's. Too cool for school up here, producing the producing the game. Got the Ray Bands Ray on. Bond, Barry Bands on. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's see here. I'll kick this off. Another high short kick. Going to cut it all the way back across to the left. Hunter Tate has got some room over here if he can get here. Cuts it back. Gets all the way down to the 41, 42-yard line, and that's what Griffin really wanted to do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the field position, you know, field didn't change position, a whole yeah, lot didn't there. really change a whole lot, but uh, like I said, sometimes coaches want them to run down there twice in a row. Sometimes that creates kind of a lane, and Hunter almost found that lane, but uh, was, able to, was able to get tackled and gets this great field position, though. Now we've only got to go, what? 58 yards. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's a you're, you're want like he said. Well, what was one of your keys to the game, right? He wants Hunter Tate to touch the ball more. Yeah, uh, if they're gonna kick the ball that side. Let Hunter Tate, one of the playmakers on this team, do something with it. As Hunter Gwynn comes back with Kyle Daniels in the backfield behind him, Hunter Tate out to the left in motion. Now handoff will be to Hunter Tate on the right side. It's a nice block, nice cut back into the inside. Gain of about six on the play for Hunter Tate. Yeah, good job there. Kind of wasn't uh, any room on the outside. Was able to make a man miss or two. Kind of get it upfield there for about a five, six-yard gain. So brings up a second and medium. That's where you want to stay. This offense loves to see. They love the second and short. Yeah, we're not a quick strike. I mean, we are a quick strike team on the ground. Um, so we like to make sure that we're staying. It keeps us multiple. Kind of keeps all the playbook open here. Some of our reverses and trick plays and things. Entertain, Along those lines. Entertaining motion. Hand up to Kynil Daniels. Patient, patient run patient right there. Run, yeah, get real close to first down. Be about a half a yard short. Bring up a third and very short for the Cash Bulldogs. Yeah, just kind of waited behind his offensive line to kind of see where they would create that hole and kind of leaned in and leaned in on them and was able to pick up four yards or so and bring up a third and very short. Jay Leonardo shifts over to the right side. Hunter Glenn looks to the sideline. Getting dark a little earlier now. It Got is. the lights on. Losing a little sunlight now. Andrew Tom's in the backfield with Kanye Dan. It's going to be the sneak, the the Hunter Glenn special. special. Yeah, <laughs> not near the end zone this time. But might be his longest run on the year though. <laughs> Three <laughs> yards. Yeah. His average just went up by <laughs> half a yard. <laughs> yeah, offensive line on those plays. All you're doing is getting lower than your opponent, and pushing them off the ball, and Hunter gets low and just kind of follows Alden Connerman there and sees where he can get to get the big first down. Reed line and Jalen Nile to the far side of the screen. Kind of Daniels alone in the backfield. Hunter Tate in motion. It's going to be pitched. Kind of Daniels fumbles it a little bit. Able to get control. And that's blocking on the outside. Right. It gets a block. It gets all the way down. He's going to step out about the 30 yard line. So the first yeah. down. Yeah, something that we really haven't ran much so far this year. Kind of the fake speed sweep there. Kind of get Hunter outside on as a lead blocker for Kynell. And. Great little wrinkle to the offense and great pick up there on a first down and for another big yard run for Kynell. I guess Kynell's probably over already 100 yards for the game after that long run on the first touchdown. Yeah, he should be now. And for another big game here, Andrew Toms in the backfield with Kynell Downs. Hunter Tate again in motion. He's going to be handed off to Andrew Toms again, maybe a gain of about one on the play. Yeah, good push by the offensive line there. Kind of, He just kind of followed those blockers and fell forward and got about three yards on the play. Bring up a second and six. About a minute left in the first quarter. Hunter Glenn goes up under center. Andrew Thomas again behind him. Hunter Tate in motion. While we hand it off to Kino Daniels again. Not a whole lot of blockers out there. And there's going to be a flag yeah. thrown as well. 
Maybe another chop block or a hold here. Kind of came from the back judge there, so might have saw the hands on the outside or wrapped around somebody. So let's see what they come up with here. So the officiating crew says it's going to be a hold yeah. against Cash. Had to push us back and bring us to a second and long, something that we wanted to stay out of. But might be our first. Uh, no, we had that jump off sides or on defense too. Right. So. Been a pretty well played first quarter by both teams. Yeah, this game has had a lot more flow than that playing yeah, game had. Playing view game, Coach Griffin and I talked about that the last couple of weeks when we kind of have our meetings and stuff. And yeah, that, there was just no flow to that game. It was one step forward, two steps back. So yeah. good to kind of see that the officiating, officially officiating crew is kind of staying out of it a little tonight in uh, reverse here. George see if you can get to the outside. Or, yeah, not a whole lot of no. blockers there. Just want to hold on to the ball. Make sure you uh, I think there might Maybe be a, a face, face mask. mask. Yeah, there's a flag when you're that. there. Now, it could be on us, too, because he had his hands kind of in a – See what they say. In a uh, stiff arm type position. So, let's see here. Since we say it's been a clean played game, we've got two – Yeah, yeah. Us. Sorry, guys. We know so much. <laughs> we are the professionals, guys. It's going to be a face mask. You called it on, on George Harper. Yeah, sometimes when you try and do that stiff arm deal, um, you kind of get it up towards the head, up towards the head, and you get in that face he mask. And I guess he probably grabbed it a little. and That's only a five-yarder on the offense. That's a little different. Than, uh, I'm surprised foul. they took that right there. You probably would think that they would decline that because it was already second and long. But second and 20 now. To each his own. George Harper lines up here at the bottom of your screen. Kind of Daniels in the backfield with Hunter Glenn. Goes quickly under center. Harper in motion. Giving again to Harper on the outside. That's that time he's got blockers. Man. He's got a lot of room on the outside, but I think he steps out of bounds. Yeah, kind of ran that speed sweep to the uh, to the short side of the field, and uh, great job, of, great job of blocking on the outside, but uh, wasn't able to keep his feet in bounds. So picked up a lot of the penalty yardage back, but still brings up a third and long. Somewhere we don't like to be, but look for Hunter Glenn here to maybe get his first passing attempt. George Harper is one of those guys. It doesn't take him long to get going full speed. He, he's a <laughs> no, <laughs> he's no, a not at all. Guy. When he hits that corner and he's got blockers out in front, it's uh, what is the old saying? Eighty-eight and out the gate. That's right. Yeah, that's it. Fourteen seconds left in the first quarter here. Give me another flag. <laughs> nope. Timeout. Dog. Time out. We'll take that time out with them here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Arrow Sign Company has been serving Oklahoma and surrounding states for over 60 years. As a family-owned business, our focus has always been on driving people to your door, not just selling you a sign. From custom sign design and manufacturing to installation and service, AeroSign has the knowledge and experience to deliver the ideal sign for you while using materials of the highest quality to ensure that your sign will look great for years and years to come. We design and manufacture our signs for longevity so you get the greatest return on investment possible. AeroSign Company, helping your business thrive since 1955. We're back here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. We've got 13 seconds left here in the first quarter. The timeout was called there. Also, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Obviously, Bethany didn't like the way that their defense was lined up to that formation. So, good timeout in the first half there. First half, your timeouts are a little bit more expendable if you don't like the way something's lined up. Uh, second half, you obviously want to keep those just in case you got a close game going into the fourth quarter so you can have the opportunity to call timeouts when you need to. But in the first half, you blow those things if you don't like the way something looks. I know Daniels, the lone man behind Hunter Glenn. Hunter Tate in motion, gets the ball on the sweep. Nice job by Bethany to stretch that one out. <laughs> Hunter Tate makes a couple of guys miss, able to get down all the way to the 23-yard line. And I think that's how we're going to end the first quarter here in Cash, Oklahoma, with Cash Bulldogs leading this one 7-3. to We'll be right back here in just a minute with the second quarter on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Phillips Music Company is now the...
the largest and most complete music store in southwest oklahoma and they're excited to be your source for all fender guitars and accessories with band instruments from yamaha and con selmer guitars from ibanez paul reed smith and siegel the latest in music tech from roland yamaha and line six and a great selection of recording hardware and software all at the best price with great local service and lessons available on most instruments visit phillipsmusic.com to shop online or stop by phillips music 107 southwest sheridan road we're back here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Get ready for second quarter action. Want to thank our second quarter sponsor, McCracken Portable Toilets. We are number one at going number two. Call them for all your portable toilets and septic needs. Thank you for their sponsorship here. As we get into the second quarter, it was a very clean played game up until the last, you know, 45 seconds or so <laughs> of that quarter when there was a few flags and uh, timeouts and some a little bit of uh, disorder there, but uh, we head into the second quarter. Cash leading this one 7-3. to three. Looking at some scores from around the state. Ada leads Tecumseh with eight minutes left in the second quarter, 7-0. to zero. Tuttle, number three Tuttle, up over number uh, 10. Cushing, 14-7 to seven in the second quarter. Poto, number four versus number eight. They lead that one 14-3. to three. Second quarter uh, just starting there. Clinton leads Elgin, 14 to nothing, with eight minutes left in the first quarter. Number one, Wagner, 14 nothing early over Cleveland. What about that both. Weatherford one? Weatherford, Chickasha do not have a score on that one yet. We keep okay. an eye on that one. Well, obviously, we are kind of at the mercy of a lot of the people that are there. That's how we get a lot of these scores. Right. So um, I will be looking for that one that says it's still starting. I know that was kicked off by now. As Looks like we got a fourth and three here. Looks like we're going to keep the offense out on the field and try and pick this up. It would be a longer field goal for Eli. Now we are going with the wind uh, at the change of the quarter, but we decide to keep the offense out there and – wouldn't be shocked if we maybe do a little try and get them off sides. But, uh, yep, kind of a – now we're going to see how they line up and it's kind run of the Dan, play. Yeah, kind of Dale's behind Hunter Glenn. Hunter Tate back in motion to the far side of the screen. I think you're right. They're trying to give them a – Timeout. Go off sides. Cash will call a timeout. We'll take that with them here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Back here on the Oklahoma Sports Network in Cash, Oklahoma at Ulrich Stadium. Get set to. We thought we were going to get the second quarter started just a second ago <laughs> and tricked you there. <laughs> I still expect the uh, offense to be out there. You kind of, if we lined up for a field goal right here, it'd be about 40 yards, kind of at the edge of his range, uh, all the way on the left hash over there. So, not surprised that we see the offense coming back out. Let's see if we can get this big pick up here and keep this drive going. And if you don't get this, you pin them deep, and so you make them have to drive the whole length of the field. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that that's uh, kind of a no-brainer right here where we where we are on the field. Andrew Tom's in the backfield with Kynell Daniels. So Hunter Tate goes in motion. It'll be handed off to Kynell Daniels, and he's going to be a great stopped. job by the defense nice job right there. Nice job the defense. That's number 21 there on the stop, Jaden Gilliland, the running back slash the linebacker for the Bethany Broncos. Yeah, I've kind of ran that play a couple times tonight. It's kind of fake uh, to Hunter Tate there, trying to get him on the outside and counter back to Kynell. But great job of the linebacker to scrape over top, see the play, not uh, go with the motion and bring up for a loss yardage play there. And turn over defense downs. back on the field. Yeah, and nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Obviously, you want to get some points there, but you pin them deep, and the way our defense has been playing, uh, still, again, have given up a touchdown now in over nine quarters. <laughs> so uh, they got some points on us, but we'll stick with the touchdown. That's a good streak to, to have. So Gray Adams, again, brings the offense on the field, number five for the Bethany Broncos. Jaden Gilliland motions out to the left. They're going to throw Real him quick the ball. Screen here. Nice job by Carlos Harbin to uh, make him have to cut that back inside. But it's going to be – Really close, probably enough for a first down for the Bethany Broncos. Yeah, what they're trying to do is get these three outside receivers with a hat on a hat and get the ball to in space to that receiver and have him make a person miss or two and brings up a. Are they going to call it a first? Are they going to measure it? What are we doing here, guys? First, it down. appeared to be a first. Yeah, they're going to give him the first. Yeah. 
yeah, what this type of offense is designed to do is get playmakers in space and kind of a matchup type offense, see where, the, see where the numbers are and go to that side. Gray Adams fakes the handoff to Gilliland, throws it out to the big number 88 there. Knocked out of bounds at about the 46. That is, again, number 88, Peyton Toll. Yeah, they like getting him the ball on some of those shorter routes. He's a big target. Big guy. Uh, good hands there. And uh, faked a little inside run and throw an easy, quick little five-yard out. And he was able to turn it into another five yards and get a first down. Back-to-back -back first downs by Bethany now with 11.28 left in the second quarter. Adams again in the back to look Gilliland. This time the handoff is to Gilliland, and there's nothing doing no, nothing. there. Good job by the cash defense. Yeah, kind of a read play there. He was reading he was reading Jalen Nido. Jalen kind of kept going out. He was going to keep the ball up the middle, but uh, he decided to hand it off, and great job of the defensive line to get some penetration there. And 33, Brady Wise with the tackle. Stop him for a little to no gain there. We'll bring up a second and 11. Adams in the back to with Gilliland. Looks out to the out left, here. too, the big guy, number seven. He does catch the ball, but not much doing there. Gets out to about the 49. That is number seven, Taylor Hine, the 6'5 sophomore for Bethany. Yeah, one thing you kind of need to watch out for, they're throwing a lot of those hitches, a lot of those quick outs. As the game progresses, I mean, if we start sitting on that route a little more, don't be surprised if they do kind of a little pump and go to try and uh, see if that DB is going to bite up on those short passes. So what you want to do on those is keep it short, keep it in front of you, rally, and tackle, and that's exactly what we did on that one. Third and six now for Bethany. Be a big play right here, defense. Adams again in the backfield with Gill and looks over the defense, gets the snap, looking straight Short, out to the yep. left again. Same exact play. He's going to have the first down. Nothing complicated about that offense. No, no. I mean, it's it's, it's your prototypical kind of spread offense where they're, like I said, looking to kind of see where the matchup is. They looked out there and saw that our defensive back was about eight yards off the ball and just run a five-yard stop route, catch it, and you got the first down. You know, you can't teach height, right? <laughs> no, you can't teach that. You can't teach height. You can't teach size. And we're going to see that fellow. He's just a sophomore, so we've got right. a couple more years of him. It's Adams in the back of the game with Gilliland. Handoff is to Gilliland. The flag a hold, the back I think. Yeah, it's going to be it's a hold. Jay, I think Jalen Nido was getting held on the outside there. And yeah, by number 61, that, Colt Montgomery. I think that'll hold of him. Yeah, I think that'll bring it back. I assume. You know what happens when you do that, though. Yeah. Yeah, you're wrong. <laughs> 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 it's a clean version of that. Uh, all right. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's exactly what it was. They'll march back. And that was Jalen Nido. And he is a he has a lot to deal with, even on his own right. I mean, you know, we talk about the other guys being big, but he's a big guy and he's an athlete. Yeah, prior to the season, Coach Griffin talked about it a little and said that might be the best DN he's ever coached. Um, so he's uh, now he's also kind of lined up on the outside as a tight end slash receiver on the offensive side of all. Only a junior, so th looking for uh, things to come as the as the next year comes as well. So yeah, first and twenty three as they fake the handoff again. Oh. Nice job of breaking that ball up by Hunter Tate. Yeah, Hunter had a chance right there if he was able to one more step was able to catch that and keep going to the end zone. But uh, great job by him to kind of read that play and. Bring up the second and very, very long. Going back to Jalen, I, I don't think that's going to be the last time he gets held throughout the year. No, yeah, yeah. He's going to beat a lot of guys, and they're going to have to hold him. Or yeah. He, you know, that's one of those. Uh, you take the – you don't like penalties, but sometimes, you know, penalties are a little bit necessary to force a – No, as a quarterback, you look over at that offensive line and say, I'll take that hold because I didn't get a ear hold. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Bring up the second 23. He looks out again to the left and throws it out wide, incomplete. It'll be third and 23 now. Tough spot for Bethany Broncos. Yeah, yeah, kind of just, an, again, another little quick hitch out on the outside here. They're kind of seeing where they're where we're lined up and, and throwing it to the best matchup. But right there, he was a little wide on the throw and brings up a third and very long. So what you're telling your DBs right here is, hey, we don't need any type of pass interference play because they got a long way to go. You want to keep everything in front and just rally to the ball. Reed and Luke Edmondson here kind of as our safeties. Need to make sure they keep everything in front right here. Yeah, Taylor Hyman at the bombing screen, the big fellow again. Carlos Harbin lined up against him. Definitely a high advantage for Bethany Broncos. But he looks bring back the screen the there. Screen. Great job Good by Jalen reading it. Yeah, they was all, he was all over that. Jalen, yeah, Jalen kind of saw that the, deep, that the uh, offensive lineman that he was blocking kind of 
did an ole there. And when you see that, you talked about that a little pregame. I thought I had a, I thought I had a big sack, and they just dumped the ball right behind me. Jalen read that one off the bat, yeah. stayed right there with the receiver, and was able to bring him down for a big, and really, it's a, yeah, it's a big good, third down. Good play. thing because he was the only guy there. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean that that's what you expect on those screens. You know, those defensive linemen when they see that third and long, we actually brought some pressure with Antonio Austin up the middle there, so. They got those ears pinned back on that third and long. They want to try and get the ball out of the quarterback's hand quick. And uh, Jalen did a great job because, yeah, if he, if he wasn't there, it was, uh, had a lot of green grass in front of him. So looks like we got a delay of game here, unfortunately. Delay of game. Pushing back another five. Still fourth down. We make it fourth and 26 now. Not really much difference there. No. Might give us a little bit of better field position, but let's see how their punting game goes here. It's number eight, I believe, in the back. It's Aiden Huey. They've got some height, that's for sure. Not, not a bad punt right. there. Catches that one on the on run. the run. Yeah, that's Braden Castro. He's all the way out to the 46-yard line. Nice return by Braden Castro. Yeah, great job on that return there. Might be our first re punt return, return for the year. Uh, great right. job by him to catch it on the run there, make that first guy miss, and pick up some big positive yards there. They're looking for him to uh, do some big things here in the near future. He plays real well in the JV games and things like that. So Coach is trying to find a way to get the ball in his hands a little bit more because when he's out in the open field, he's gone. Yeah, he's just a sophomore, yeah. 5'7", 155, and so he will be playing a lot of JV games. Coach uh, Griffin trying to get him. Uh, you want to give him as much game experience as possible by the time he's at this level so he can uh, recognize things a little better. Game slows down for him. I think that's oh, yeah. probably the big thing. Hunter Tate in motion. Handoff is going to go to Hunter Tate on the right side. He's going to have to beat a man, not really able to do that, and loses about a yard on the play. They are focused in on that sweep. Yeah, they are. I mean, it's kind of our bread and butter as an offense. With kind of something Coach Griffin's known for is those speed sweeps. And uh, they did a good job kind of stringing it out. And it looks like now we're going to the Wildcat package. Oh, boy. With uh, Hunter Tate back there. And Hunter Glenn lined up over here as a as a receiver. He wanted Hunter Tate to have the ball a little bit more. We saw this use not too yeah. long ago, right? Yeah, a couple weeks ago. Kind of threw a deep pass here to Hunter Glenn. Hunter has the ability to throw the ball. There's a flag on the play. As to so they're going to say that we didn't have enough people on line scrimmage, yeah. I think, because it looks like the offensive line was kind of a step half back. a step back. Um, so that would have gone down as a pass because it was forward. But, uh, yeah, legal formation there. The offensive line, I think that's what they're going to. It's well, it's, it's yeah, they'll the call it a false star, but it'll be the, essentially the yeah, same it's thing. A, yep. the same signal as for right for illegal formation than as it is false start. So, well, marches back just a little bit. Bring yeah. up a second and sixteen, I believe. Well, maybe not. Let's see. They're trying some to of those out, formations. Right? You're trying to get those guys. You're trying to kind of put some tape on. Put some put some formations on film. So as the district play moves forward, you got a little bit of something else to prepare for. Newcastle obviously will have a little bit shorter of a week next week because they're only able to get back to practice on Wednesday. Again, our game is next Saturday at 2 o'clock, not like a normal Friday night. So yeah, A little bit different kickoff there. And you can also watch them, too. Uh, they're an Oklahoma Sports Network team. So we uh, thank them. Josh Calloway is uh, the new play-by-play -play guy out there. And he's uh, done a lot of writing for uh, Oklahoma football team. He's done some Thunder stuff. and so I think he's writing for us now, too. We've got a little yeah, blog yeah, going. Right. got a little yeah, blog going. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So... Looking forward to reading some of his stuff as the uh, season moves forward. So we have time out right here. We'll take it with them on the Oklahoma Sports Network.
back here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. 758 left to go in the second quarter as they did not take the penalty. The handoff is to Hunter Tate who drops the ball and probably needs to fall down. He's trying to make something happen. Gets all the way back to about the 42. He's going to lose two yards on the play. Bring up a fourth down for the Cash Bulldog. Yeah, a little sloppy there right there on that drive. Hunter and uh, Hunter there was not able to get the speed sweep handoff taken care of. and. Hunter did a good job of grabbing the ball and kind of getting as much as he could, but not a very good-looking drive right there for us. And yeah, Drake Jones back there. Yeah. I haven't seen a lot of Drake this year. No, he kind of had a little little something there in the El Reno game, so kind of sat him out the last couple weeks, so good to see him back out on the field. He's going to be a force for us on the defensive nice, side of the ball yeah, and nice punting kick. the ball. Is Fair there. catch call for the 23, and caught by Bethany Bronco. That's where they'll start this drive. 7.09 left to go in the second quarter. They bring up Hunter, Hunter, and we got a couple of yeah, three, Hunter, four Hunter, Hunter, team, right? right. Yeah. Hunter, Hunter, and the other brother, Hunter. <laughs> All right, let's see if the defense can kind of – it's kind of a – it's kind of been a slow-moving game, not uh, – not uh, not like the unrhythm that we had. Uh, yeah, there's still rhythm to the game. Dude. There's still rhythm yeah. to the game, but it's uh, it's been kind of slow moving, defensive slugfest, which you kind of expect in some district games. And what it's done, unfortunately, is kind of take the crowd out of it a little. But let's see if we can get a big play here on the defensive side and get this big old crowd we got here back into this thing. Adams back in the backfield with Gilland. Toll out to the left. Gillen now in motion. They're going to throw him the ball. And Carlos Harbin again does a nice job cutting inside. Doesn't make the tackle. A few missed tackles as they get up to about the 42-yard line. Again, same play they ran last drive. Kind of getting that guy out there on the outside. Great job of blocking on the outside by their, by their receivers and was able to uh, pick up a big play on first down there. Well, the first down for the Bethany Broncos, 6.53 left to go in the first half. Watch also for that as the game progresses. A little fake kind of quarterback draw up the middle there. This will be interesting. Be a false start, it looks like. Good ball. False start. Yeah, false start on Beth. Yeah, yeah so, what, back five yards. so what they'll potentially do as the game moves on is they'll kind of pump that. And everybody's going to kind of flow out there. They'll pump it. The quarterback will potentially run up the middle and could, uh, like I said, he's a good runner. We haven't seen him run much. Um, but he is. he has shown that he's a good – runner as the season has gone on so look for them to maybe motion that guy out kind of pump it there and run up the middle and see if he can find a space so the lefty Adams again in the backfield with Gilliland Heim on the bottom of your screen the 6'5 sophomore handoff is to Gilliland there's Drake yeah, and Drake Jones is a nice job minimal gain on play yeah, like I said, kind of missed the last two games with a little bit of a knee injury. You can see he's kind of got the uh, got the uh, brace on there, but they're looking for big things. Played great against El Reno, so it's good to see him back on the field at the linebacker position and see him making some tackles. As Abby Lechtenberg comes out onto the field. You'll be at the bottom of your screen with number seven, Taylor Heim. They've been throwing the ball pretty heavy to that side. Bring up a second 16 with Gillane in the backfield with Adams. Not been up under center all night, been in shotgun. He's going to roll out and kind of an option looking yeah, an look option there. there. There's going to be a hold, I believe, on the play. It's be an interesting call right here for Coach Griffin. It'll be a third and long, but if you take the penalty, it'll be a second and even longer. So it'll be an interesting call here if he decides to take this or not. We'll see if he's going to take it. I think you might want to push him back here. He's thinking about it. Yeah. Holy. <laughs> yeah. It's the Broncos. They He's haven't really the shown the ability all night to He's throw it down. very deep. I mean, it's kind of a dink and dunk type offense so far. Um, so probably not a bad idea to take the penalty there, push them f even further back, and just make sure you tell all your guys, hey, keep everything in front. Let's get this punt out of here so we got good field position for the offense. I'll bring up a. Uh, Second and very long now for the Broncos. Sometimes you don't like taking it, though, because you're giving them an extra down to kind of make something up here. It would have been third and long anyway. Gillen out in the motion to the left. They look over that way, but there's another another flag on the play. I know we talked about it early, kind of, <laughs> as it <laughs> wasn't uh, a slow-moving game and all that kind of stuff. And the last, the last uh, I don't know, 30 seconds of the first quarter and moving into the second quarter has been a little sloppy on both sides. 
Offensive kind of stalled, but uh, kind of what you expect in the first uh, week of district play. Yeah, everybody but knows everybody in district play. Bethany's new, but uh, they're nothing new. As coaching staff, they've um, <laughs> been running the same offense for at least, you know, same schemes. It looks like the last 14 years or so from what I understand. And so they're not doing anything different. And they've been a, a, a pretty good team in 4A the last several years. Let me bring up a second in. A, you don't see this very often, a 40 yards here. As he drops back, he's probably just going to try to throw it. Oh, he's got a guy on the outside there. Yeah, don't touch him. Yeah, nice. That's a nice job there uh, by yeah, number 42, number Zachary Johnson, who's back this week. Yeah, he's back. He missed the uh, Plainview game, so glad to see him back on the field again. And right there, kind of now what you're telling your defense right here is, hey, keep everything in front. Don't try and make a big play or anything like that. Keep, stay off the receivers. The last thing you need is a pass interference that gives them an automatic first down. So, Let's see that I expect them to potentially run kind of a little screen player, quick, easy hitter, and just rally to the ball defense. He drops oh, back nope, to pass. He's going to throw it deep to number seven, Heim. No. Pass interference. No. Carlos Harbin. Exactly what you didn't want, but that didn't really look like. I think that was good coverage there by Carlos, but unfortunately. So is it an automatic first down in, in high school? Do you know? I, yeah, I, I believe it is, yes. Okay. And that's super unfortunate right there. I mean, good coverage. I mean, he was behind him, but it didn't look like he get, got there early. But No, nope, replay third down. Okay. okay, so good. Yeah, so that, you know. So that, that, see, that would be unfortunate you know, when you get him into yeah, a third and 40. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, I, you know, that's probably to reward the defense in some degree. You know, they, they don't want to just, like, put a big uh, hindrance on the defense. to you, know, you throw a three-yard out and get a pass right. interference, and you got a third and 40. It doesn't work. So, that will bring up a third and 16. Still manageable, but uh, definitely long as he looks out to the right side. Right there. Got it's him. open. And no, nice great job. job. So, they're they going to say that a fumble. fumble. Hunter now he fumbles the it. ball back. So, that's going to be first down. Bethany will get the ball back. And that will be a first down because we have possession. Right. <laughs> so, George Harper with a nice job yeah. of knocking that ball loose. And then I, I'm surprised that they called that a catch because it was kind of bang, bang. But yeah, uh, it, yeah, I, don't think, I don't know if he made a football move or not. No. But they do call it a fumble. Uh, Cash gives it right back. Bethany gets the first down. Not a not a usual first down. Not something no. you see very often. But they do get a first down nonetheless with 430 left. In the second quarter, down four points. And the reason that's a first down right there was a change of possession. Hunter right. had the opportunity there to return it, so he becomes now kind of an offensive player. And by him fumbling and then picking up, it's kind of a change. That's kind of a turnover. It was two turnovers on one play. Hand off in to Gilliland and it's tackled there. Not much doing again. Cash defense doing a nice job. This has been a, like you said, it's been a kind a of a slow, sloppy played second quarter here. Not really sloppy, but just kind of no, no rhythm and and great defensive plays by both sides. Drake Jones with the tackle for the Cash Bulldogs. I'll bring up a second and seven now for the Bethany Broncos who are trying to go down and take the lead before halftime, or at least tack some points onto the board. As Adams is in the backfield again with Gilliland. Whole far sideline. Come to the hitch on this side over here. Heim. It's going to be incomplete. Bring up a third and seven. A little lefty quarterback sometimes when that ball comes out of his hand, kind of tails that way. And that's why you've seen him miss more often tonight to the outside. Um, ball kind of kind of comes out of their hands a little bit different than us, us right handers. And Takes a little bit of use, getting used to to catch those balls, too, because they're kind of different than the way that they come out and the rotation on the ball. But word out Chickasha is the game is postponed in Chickasha. Postponed. So Weatherford against Chickasha, that game has been postponed. Is so that a COVID come, reason? I don't, or? don't have any idea. They just know right. that game is a postponed game, which is obviously why it didn't get started. The Adams is chased around. There's going to be a flag. He's going to go ahead and run the ball anyway and step out of bounds. It's about the cash for you now, but likely this will be a hold. This is an interesting call right here again because you're going to have fourth and short, um, but it's on the, our side of the 50, so you would expect that they would go for it. So I think they'll push him back right here. Coach Griffin looks like he's agreeing with me, which is a scary thought, <laughs> <laughs> but I'll take it. You give yourself a little more credit than that. <laughs> Now they will be pushed back. Bring a third and long now. 
Well, what happened too there was a spot of the foul call. So he was about three or four yards beyond the line of scrimmage. So it pushes it him even further back. So makes sense why we take that one. Looks like he's going to go under center here. I haven't seen that much tonight. No, not Gilman's much. still behind him. Last time they went under center, yep, same thing they did. Oh, boy. <laughs> all right, we're getting a little. Yeah, the two times they've gone under center, all they've done is kind of faked the run and dropped him back to throw the ball again. Another penalty. <laughs> all right, so we're back to where we were basically two minutes ago when Hunter Tate had the fumble. Yeah, it's be interesting to find out what what the postponement is related to. Okay, I don't I'm think there's any right weather. Now. I'm trying to work on it right now. See if I can figure anything out here. Because that would be a big postponement if they're not able to get that game in later. in the, Well, they won't be able to get that game in. Everybody does. There's no more off weeks, really. I believe they're going to try for what I'm seeing as they're going to try to play it uh, tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Here we go. We have another flag. Make it now third and 30. So we've had a third and 40 and now a third and 30. Good ball. Ball start. It's the Broncos. Five-yard penalty. Benny had to go and open this man. We had, to, we, had to, we had to talk about. Yeah, I mean, I was saying how this was unlike last week and smoothly played and whew, second quarter. We're going to have a timeout on the field. We'll take that with them with 3.05 left here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Back here at Cash, Oklahoma at Ulrich Stadium. Cash Bulldogs still lead this one 7-3 to three over the Bethany Broncos with 3.05 left in the first half. That's the Weatherford. Not often in one drive. Well, I guess it technically isn't the same drive because you had the change of possession there. But not often in one drive you have a third and 30 and a third and 40. So the Weatherford game will be made up tomorrow in all likelihood. Don't know exactly what's going on with that. But Adams gets the ball in the backfield. Again, the lefty looks. Got a lot of time being chased out of the pocket. Gets a couple of blockers. Nice job by Carlos Harbin to force him out of bounds at the original line of scrimmage. Bring him a fourth down and about 11. Yeah, fourth and 11. This side of the 50, I think, uh, three minutes left in the second quarter. You punt this thing away. Let's see if Castro can get his hands on the ball again or... George Harper back there and see if they can make somebody miss and get a little excitement going in this crowd. Second, yeah. quarter, second quarter's been a little slow, a little sloppy, so the crowd's kind of been taken out of it. So they're just kind of on their hands waiting for something good to happen and ready to erupt. Again, George Harper and Braden Castro back deep for the Bulldogs. Nice kick. Got some running room here. Castro, and he's got some... Got some blockers out front, but he's knocked ah. down and gets up to about the 34-yard line. That's where Cash will start the drive with 247 left in the first half. Yeah, good job by the uh, kickoff coverage team there. Looked like he had some room, but uh, somebody kind of got him by the shoestrings there and stopped his momentum. And see if we can get a score. This would be a big score here. If we can get this one in and get the ball right back, could kind of be a – 14, 10 point, 14 point kind of swing here. About two minutes and 47 seconds left in the first uh, half here. Two timeouts left for Cash. They might come into play with 247 left. I think we'll get back to kind of some of our bread and butter here. We kind of have tried a couple little things different, but uh, let's see what we go with here. Fake to kind of dance. Hunter Glenn draws back. Got He's going to throw it deep. Got a chance. Oh, and just where's overshoots the number 16, Reed Lyon. Yeah, kind of a wheel route there by Reed Lyon. Good job by 31 on Bethany. You kind of stick with them. And not a bad throw there. Kind of caught through it where only our guy could catch it. Uh, just a little out of the reach of Reed Lyon there. I've seen Hunter Glenn get a lot of chances to throw the ball this year. But he's been accurate, and that was a good throw. Just a, that was a good play all the way around. But that will bring up a second and 10. 
240 left now. Kind of Daniels, the lone man in the backfield. Jalen Nido out to your left there. Well, it's kind of an offsides there. I yeah, that'd be number 72. Yeah, yeah. that's Deverick Turner flinched a little bit there. Those big guys, when they even flinch just a little bit. Yeah, you see it. Still second down. And he knew it right away. It's unfortunate. And it happens, though. We have a second and 15. Yeah, I mean, it's something the professionals do, so oh, yeah. it's, it's going to happen. Um, Looks like Luke Edmondson's coming in. Saw his mom today at the country club. Number 16, Reed Line gets off the field. Hunter Glenn in. Andrew Toms, the lone man behind him. George Harper in motion. Oh, got a man. Got a man. He's got Hunter Tate. Oh, ah. He overshoots him. Just overthrows him there. Put a little more air under that, but that will bring up a third and 15. He's had, he did have his man running wide open. Yeah, good job. A little play call there. Kind of a fake run. And had Hunter going up the seam and just a little over the reach. On that one, when he's kind of running, when there's no, when there, people are kind of behind him, what you want to do there is put some more air. Let Hunter run under that one. He kind of threw that more like a seam shot right. uh, on a line. Want to try and get that ball out, out there a little and let him run under it if possible. Kind of Daniels behind Hunter Glenn with 233 left in the first half. There's a reverse. reverse yeah, and kind of read that one right off the bat. Big number 88. All over that. And that will bring up a fourth down. Yeah, a little sloppy on offense there in the second quarter. But uh, – Fortunately, still have the lead here. I'm sure they'll make, we make some adjustments there at halftime. That's one good thing that we do. We are kind of a second-half team. We've shown the last couple years. So, Not sure if we have enough out there. As Drake Jones looks to the sideline. Fred Castro as well. I think they're letting as much of this time click off, so that way... Yeah, that's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to get the snap off right here, which is nothing left on the play clock. Short Decent high punt. kick. Let's see if it takes a roll it's for a us. Good there you roll. Go. And it gets all the way down. Pick it's it up now. 37 yard line. That's where Bethany will take over with 137 left in the first half. Yeah, let's see if defense can get a big stop here going to the half. Maybe we can get the ball back. Maybe force a turner over here, but. Uh, Second half, second quarter hasn't been the smoothestly played, but still a lot of game left. Knew this was going to be a tough one. It's the first district game, haven't played in a week. Um, kind of had some jitters, I guess, with the first district game. Kind of a with the week off, maybe a little, a little sloppiness, and uh, see if we can get this thing back rolling in the second half. Taylor Heim and Peyton Toll, both of the big guys for Bethany at the bottom of your screen on the same side of the field. Gillen goes go in the motion. They're going to they're try to hit one of them. Right there. Right over the middle. Good job. My goodness. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, Antonio Austin held on. Yeah, I mean, 6'7", 240 against 5'9", uh, 210. So took him for a little bit of a ride there, unfortunately. But Bethany, good job of getting him down. Quick back to the line. Wait, they, there's somebody offside. Yeah, that yeah. will be number 88. He is moving. Yeah, they were trying to figure out which one was lined up on the ball and which one was, wasn't. And both of them were off the ball. So, again, kind of one step forward, two steps back for both teams here in the second quarter. The first and 15th, 121 left in the first half. Bethany yeah. has one timeout. Yeah, Bethany's got one timeout. Again, both of the – Toll and High both on the bottom of the screen here. Gillian now goes to the right side here. They'll throw that slant right that there way. behind it. Yep. Nice job by George Harper making the tackle. Gain of about, oh, 10 yards. Bring up about a second five now. Maybe That's second four. Yeah, what they're doing right there is just kind of running two slants, and he's picking which one Take has the down. biggest open spot. And Bethany moving with some tempo now. Just under a minute left in the first half as Adams gets the ball. Going to go out, on an out route here. Right, nice quick pass. We'll get the first down. Stop the clock as well. 47 yeah. seconds left. Good throw and catch right there. Kind of a little out of pass complete, fade out route there and hit the out route for the first down. Another big, another first down. But the big thing for them is that was got out of bounds and was able to stop the clock. With the way that their offense is set up, I know they're not a necessarily a deep passing team, but they line up, they, they don't huddle. 
And they had the ability to go quick. Adams, a lone man in the backfield. Got five wide. And go Look up top to, to that. Right. Nice job and able to escape the pressure. Throw it to Heim. Nice Great job open by field tackle. Carlos Harbin to make the tackle. Yeah, because if he if if he doesn't if he's not able to bring Heim down right there, that could have been a big longer play. Looks like they're going to go a little clock tempo here. They're going to stop the clock with 27 seconds left. And bring up a third and very short two yards. 27 seconds here. They still have a timeout to burn. So they could run it right here to get the first down and then call a quick timeout. But uh, the way their short passing game is going, I think they might stick to that. Third and two. Again, both of the big guys at the bottom of the screen there. And Gil Lane, a low man in the backfield. They've been splitting him out quite a bit on this drive. But he stays back there. Put him in motion out to the left. Going to run a slant route behind it. Oh, a little fade. Oh, yeah, no. Great catch. Yeah, nice job there. Carlos Harbin was trying to avoid the pass interference, and that allowed number seven, uh, again, Taylor Hine, to go up and get the ball. First down, Bethany driving with 20 seconds left. Nice, nice drive here. As they stop the clock again with 18 seconds now left in the first half. Yeah, he kind of lost uh, track of the ball there and didn't want to pick up another. Carlos did. Didn't want to pick up another pass interference play, so kind of tried to box his guy out almost, but good job behind it, jump up there and get it at its high point, and got 18 seconds left, one timeout, they're kind of in that area where they can throw some slants, and looks like they're taking high mounts, which, which might help us a little, look for them to maybe go to a jump ball over here with number 88 on Carlos, or Phil Lane again in the backfield with Adams, toll on the bottom of your screen, they are going to look his way. Yeah, and kind of a back a shoulder. Touchdown, yeah. Bethany Broncos. Reed Line a little mad at himself, think he thought he had that one. But Bethany Broncos are going to take a 9-7 to seven lead now. 15 seconds left in the first half. Yeah, kind of a little back shoulder fade route there. I was able to get it over um, Brady Wise and in front of Carlos there for the touchdown. Yeah, and the touchdown streak is now over. No. Yeah. Almost full, 10 full quarters, but looks like they're going to call a timeout here. Timeout. We'll take that timeout with them here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Are you looking for more than just a job? Forest Foods in Lawton offers a career with a competitive starting wage, opportunity for advancement, life and health insurance, including medical, dental, and vision, as well as 401k retirement plan. At Forest, you can be proud of a company that gives back to the community. But most of all, you can take pride from making a quality product. Forest Foods, making the best tasting hot dogs and smoked sausages, the food America likes to eat. So come be a part of a winning team and start your path to success today. We're back here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. 15 seconds left to go. Bethany just scored a touchdown. The pass from Adams to Toll to take a 9-7 to seven lead. Extra point still pending here. Yeah, I got some things to clean up at halftime. Not a, having a little problem executing on the offensive side right now. Part of that has to do with penalties and things. And Kick is up, and it looks like it's going to be good. That will make it like a, you're going to... 10 to 7 lead now for the Bethany Broncos. We'll be right back here in just a minute on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Suffer from knee or hip pain? Stop hurting and start moving with Mako Partial Knee and Total Hip Replacement. Comanche County Memorial Hospital is proud to be the first and only in Southwest Oklahoma to offer this minimally invasive technology. Surgeons perform procedures with a Mako Robotic Arm Assistant for accurate implant placement customized just for you. The result is improved surgical outcome, minimal hospitalization, rapid recovery, and relief from pain. To see if Mako is right for you, call us today. Welcome back to Ulrich Stadium here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Bethany just taking a 10-7 lead now over the Cash Bulldog with 15 seconds left here in the first half. As we get set for another Wayne's drive-in kickoff. Come on, everyone. 
Let's go to Waynes. Had a running into the kicker on that extra point, so Bethany, I believe, took it, so that way they would, uh, on the kickoff, so they'll be kicking off a little bit closer to midfield. 15 seconds, two timeouts. Depends on, I guess, where you get the ball, what you decide to do. Had some chances on offense, kind of a couple overthrows, a uh, couple sloppy plays. No rhythm really on offense right now, kind of because we kind of one step forward, two step back. Big run by Kynell there, 76-yard touchdown run early in the first quarter. Yeah, outside of that big play. Hasn't yeah, it hasn't a been a whole lot of – they're doing a good job of defending us across the board and a little fake on side there. Remember those days? Hunter Tate and like George Harper on the far side deep. I don't know if they'll get a chance at this. So we'll see what Bethany does Yeah, it'll does be interesting here. what they decide to do here. Sometimes they'll – yeah, kind of a high sky kick there to George Harper. George Harper's going to get a chance, but it's going to bounce out of bounds. It's good for us. It gets us, what, to the 40, so right. might take a shot, see if you can get some – We've had some guys the, running open. Yeah, to see if you can take a shot maybe and get uh, a chunk yardage play, call a timeout, and take one shot at the end zone. Got a lot of basketball guys that can high point the ball. So see what we do right here. Still 15 seconds left here in the first half. Ah, we half. get it at the 30. I thought we got it a little high bit school closer. Are, yeah, yeah, high school rules are different. Uh, that's, yeah, that's <laughs> – you guys at home are watching. There's a – Pretty much every level, a little bit different to some degree on the yardage. So, yeah, yeah. they will bring that out to the 30. I still think you might take a shot. Here. I think you do. I mean, I don't think it I don't think it hurts. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, if you throw it deep, I mean, you're not going to get a pick six or anything. So, I think they take a chance right here. Or they'll hand it up, <laughs> hand yeah. up to Kynell, who uh, maybe not. But they're yeah. going to throw the ball. Hunter Glenn scrambles out. Get rid of it. Oh, my. That's Fumble, what, and that's exactly what you don't want. Yeah. That's how we'll probably end this first yeah, half. Yeah, I think we'll let that one roll now. That's your first half score. Cash Bulldogs down three points to the Bethany Broncos. We'll be right back here in just a minute with their Phillips Music halftime show. Suffer from knee or hip pain? Stop hurting and start moving with Mako Partial Knee and Total Hip Replacement. Comanche County Memorial Hospital is proud to be the first and only in Southwest Oklahoma to offer this minimally invasive technology. Surgeons perform procedures with a Mako Robotic Arm Assistant for accurate implant placement customized just for you. The result is improved surgical outcome, minimal hospitalization, rapid recovery, and relief from pain. To see if Mako is right for you, call us today. Back here on the Oklahoma Sports Network with your Phillips Music Halftime Show. Phillips Music, uh, let's uh, see them there in Lawton all the time. I drive by them on, on Sheridan. They do a, a good job with all your uh, music needs. Phillips Music, toot your own horn with Phillips Music. We're waiting for uh, the band to come out here. I see them lining up out there, and we will let you enjoy um, this halftime show. Yeah, we'll have the band come out for a little while. We'll also have... Um, recognition of the 1980s right. Bulldogs. Uh, they'll have uh, recognition related to the players and the coaches. Uh, 1980 Bulldogs were pretty good. They had their first playoff win, I believe, in 83, if I remember correctly, that we talked about last year, up until last year's team with the big win over Tecumseh. So look forward to the halftime show with the band and uh, meeting those 80s Bulldogs. And we'll be back with you guys there shortly. Seniors, Allison Longacre, Tony Clark, Anaya Stevenson, Christina Wallace. Juniors, Asia Smith, Talaya Zarth. Sophomores, Angel Climes, Brianna Peterson, Haley Price, Michaela Roberts, Quentin Smith, Alana Swearingen. Freshman, Caitlin Landry, Lexi Matson, Emily Thornton, Delilah Weisman, and Kirsten Wilson. I got 
that real good feel good stuff Up under the seat of my big black jacked up truck Rolling on 35s, pretty girl by my side You got that sun tan skirt and boots Waiting on you to look my way and stoop You little hot stuff over here Girl, hand me another, hand me another, yeah Catch us up a little catfish dinner Don't we sound like a winner when I lay you down and love you right Yeah, that's my kind of night The Dash High School varsity cheerleaders Ladies and gentlemen, now entering the field is our very own Pride of Cash Marching Band. Pride of Cash Marching Band is under the direction of Mr. Derek Griner and Mr. Rob Miller. Pride of Cash Band is led by senior drum majors Rosalind Reese and Morgan Chisholm. Pride of Cash Drumline is led by drumline captains Alexis Olian and Sean Williams. The Pride of Cash Color Guard is directed by Mrs. Tracy Freeze and assisted by guard captains Fallon Griffith and Morgan Sherwood. Tonight's halftime show is titled Rockstar, featuring Bully by Shinedown and Learn to Fly by the Foo Fighters. Our featured trumpet soloist is Matthew Brew. Drum majors, is your band ready? Bulldog fans, let's cheer on your pride of cash. Marching band!
Ladies and gentlemen, your pride of cash, marching band. And now at this time, another special evening here at Ulrich Stadium. Tonight, we welcome back the players and coaches of the 1980s. Big thank you to Coach Bill Hunt and his daughter Shannon Benarens for some interesting information here. The 80s was a totally awesome decade on and off the football field. The Bulldogs from Cash captured district championships four years in a row, went undefeated during the regular season two years in a row, were the number one ranked team in the state in 1982, advanced to the second round of the playoffs for the first time in school history. These teams were a force to be reckoned with and a big part of helping to build the foundation of Bulldog pride. All of the young men who played under the Friday Night Lights during the 1980s, whether recognized with a postseason award or not, contributed to the legacy that is Cash Bulldog football. Here are some of the highlights. 1980-81, record 9-2. All districts, Stacey Castleberry, Robert Morrow, Farron Alpati, Billy Edmondson, Chad Cargis, Scott Maxwell, Logan Johnson, Kevin Nimitz, Chris James, and Jonathan Poway. All area, Billy Edmondson and Chad Cargis. All state, Billy Edmondson. Coach Hunt selected Coach of the Year for Southwest Area by the Lock Constitution and picked to coach the West in the All-State game. 1981-82 record, 7-4. All-District, Mike Figueroa, Louis Popachko, Greg Fikes, Roy Collins, Ty Nichols, Tim Zimmer, Jerry Dodd, Renee Torres. All-Area, Tim Zimmer, Mike Figueroa, Roy Collins, and Greg Fikes. 1982-83, undefeated regular season record, 10-1. All-District, Mark Fikes, Greg Johnson, Steve Morrow, Linson, Hearn, John Carroll, Mike Figueroa, Alfred Wright, Roy Collins, Ronnie Castleberry, All-Area. Mike Figueroa, Roy Collins, Ronnie Castleberry, Steve Morrow, Linson Hearn, Steve Pinchback, Tim Zimmer, All Region, Mike Figueroa, and All State Honorable Mention, Mike Figueroa. 83-84, undefeated regular season record, 11-1, second round playoffs for the first time in school history. Outstanding District 8 player, Tim Zimmer, All District, Rodney Tartsa, Billy Oakman, Lyle Cable, Terry Polly, Brock Cargis, Steve Pinchback, Todd Ash, Chuck Stevens, Sean Stevens, All Area, Tim Zimmer, Steve Pinchback, Billy Oakman, Lyle Cable, Brock Chargis, All Region, Billy Oakman, Tim Zimmer, and All State, Tim Zimmer. 84 85, record 6 and 4, All District, Rodney Tartza, Greg Ellis, Todd Bauman, Terry Polly, Tommy Wiesaw, Eric Barmettler, All Area. Rodney Tartza, Todd Bauman, Eric Barmettler, Terry Polly, and All Stater that year, Rodney Tartza. 85 86, record 5 and 5, All District, Andy Womavoya, Mark Womavoya, Kurt Cox. David Hodges, Charles Thomas, Joseph Carroll, James Boydston, Mike Oakman, Shannon Lowe, all area Joseph Carroll, Shannon Lowe, Mike Oakman. 86-87, all area Tommy Wilcox. 87-88, record 8-3, all area Heath Cox, Richard Carter, Curtis Pittman, Stacy Hunt. 88-89, record 5-6, all district Pete Mendieta, Sean Hilmer, Ethan Epperson. 88-89-90, record 4-6, all district Greg Quitone, Billy Adovich, Tony Griffith, Reggie Combs, Boyd Franks. Woo! That was a busy decade. Tonight, we welcome back to the field here at Ulrich Stadium, Todd Bauman. Please step forward when we call your name. Mike Figueroa. Bobby Platt. Ronnie Castleberry. Mark Fikes. Jonathan Coway. Linson Hearn. Bill Oakman, Preston Thomason, Logan Johnson, Ethan Epperson, Rodney Tartza, Tony Griffith, Farron Griffin, Lance Owens, Mark Womavoya, Jim Mayhaffey was a coach during that decade, Billy Edmondson, Brent McCoy, Bill Grimes, Kevin Popachico, Chuck Yaccioni, Neil Cox, Gene Fikes was a coach during that decade, Mike Cargill, and also Bill Hunt was a coach during that decade. And now, a letter from Coach Griffin. To the players and coaches of the 1980s, Tonight, we honor you, the players and coaches of the 1980s. This decade is so dear to my heart because I was a part of this group. To the coaches, I want to thank you for the inspiration, life lessons, and mentorship you provided for these young men, especially me. The 80s were a great decade, 
for Cash Bulldog football due to your leadership. To the players of the 80s, thank you so much for the memories. As a young boy growing up in the early 80s, I looked up to each of you as heroes. I remember those undefeated regular seasons and how you put Cash Bulldog football on the map. It was a great time watching you each Friday night. To those, to those of you who were my teammates in the late 80s, notice he put late 80s to make himself not sound so old. It was an honor to play alongside each of you and share a bond that I still feel today with so many of you. From the early days of grade school football under Coach Fikes and Coach Mayavi to the seventh grade season under Coach Asnap, and then into high school being led by Coaches Hunt, Fikes, Mayavi, Asnap, Watts, Munyon, and Mullinix. Those were absolutely some of the greatest memories I have. Tonight, we honor you for your part in making Cash Bulldog football what it is today. We thank you. Again, we don the red and white colors for you each Friday night to extend that Bulldog tradition. We have a future because of our past. It is a great day to be a Bulldog. What's a Bulldog? Always a Bulldog. Sincerely, Coach Brad Griffin and the Bulldog Pack. 1980s, welcome home. You've been watching the Phillips Music Halftime Show, Phillips Music, Toot Your Own Horn with Phillips Music. We'll be right back here in just a minute with the second half on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Nobody moves more real estate than Pam and Barry's team. And that's why our clients keep coming back to us. We had some friends that recommended the Pam and Barry team, and they exceeded all of our expectations. Our home sold in three days. It was a wonderful and easy experience. And we would love to help you. So follow the signs of Pam and Barry's team at REMAX at 248-8800. We're, we're not bragging, bragging we're, we're just applying for a job. Bridges and Buckner Dentistry at 1802 Northwest 52nd Street has over 32 years of combined experience. They serve Southwest Oklahoma for implant placement and final restorations using guided surgery and CEREC technology. This enables them to do same day crowns in the office. Call to set up your appointment today or visit them online at bridgesandbucknerdentistry.com. Want to take the stress out of your next remodel or building project? Comanche Home Center can deliver all the lumber, supplies, and tools right to you. When you're done, they'll pick up anything you don't use and give you credit towards your next project. Give Comanche Home Center a call today for a free estimate. Here at Carpet One, we have a great selection of carpet, hardwood, vinyl, tile, laminate, and area rugs. With all this, you're sure to find exactly what you want for your home. Come browse our exclusive selection or give Carpet One at Comanche Home Center a call today for a free estimate. Feet. We use them every day, working, playing, and usually taking them for granted. If your feet hurt, see the professionals at Southwest Foot and Ankle Clinic. They've been serving Southwest Oklahoma for the past 36 years, providing the highest quality care and combining the latest technology with old-fashioned Oklahoma compassion. With three locations to serve you, Lawton, Duncan, and Altus. Call today or visit us online at swokfoot.com. 4D Landscaping and Irrigation has been providing top-rated professional landscape and irrigation services for the past 25 years. They take your vision for that perfect landscaping project for your home, new construction, or business and make it a reality with their easy financing options. You'll want to make sure to ask them about their seasonal services too. 4D Landscaping and Irrigation. Call 510-9983. Back here on the Oklahoma Sports Network as we get about two minutes until we kick off the second half. It was a nice uh, halftime show. It's been fun watching these uh, decades come back. And the 80s were honored tonight. And uh, so Coach Griffin was a part of those decades. And so, you know, the letter that was read from him, you talked about how 
it was a memorable thing for him. A lot of these guys that you know played before him, he looked to up to as heroes, and I love that about again, especially in the smaller towns across the really the United States, not just Oklahoma, that you have that right. And I mean, I remember that as well. I mean, I mean, I remember going back to when I was just a little bitty kid, even watching you know every sport, and you looked up to these guys and. They were your heroes. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, I, we anybody that's played the game of football, I mean, remembers their teammates, remember those practices, remember those Friday nights, the bus uh, rides, Saturday nights, <laughs> bus rides, summer camps, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. it's a great thing that they're doing with the 50th anniversary of this year, kind of bringing back all those guys that were here before the – before before these young kids are out there playing, and good to see those guys out there. Good to see some of the coaches out here as well. Uh, so it's a good thing that they're doing this year. Look forward to the 90s, 2000s, and 2010s uh, as we move forward into the season. Yeah, a lot of success they had in the 80s. Now, what kind of success, what things do we need to do to have success in the second half? Ha, we got to clean things up. I mean, one of the big keys to the game prior to the game was execute the offense. And right now the offense is a little sputtering outside of that 76-yard run by Kynell Daniel. Outside of that, really haven't had much motion, haven't had much movement on the offensive side of things. Some penalties, some putting the ball on the ground and things like that. So I look uh, potentially for a big, heavy dose of Kynell. Uh, here in the second half, we get the ball. So it'll be good to see the offense kind of get something going um, and make sure that we can get some points on the board and get this big crowd that we have here back in the game. It was kind of a slow, slo sloppy first half, so the fans kind of sat on their hands the entire time. So they're waiting for a big play to happen so they can erupt and uh, hopefully we can uh, start wearing on them a little and put this thing away. But first, we've got to get things going on the offensive side of the ball. As far as defense, they're doing a great job. I mean, outside of that last drive there, they've done a good job of kind of keeping everything in front. Um, big play on the touchdown there, kind of the back, sh back to shoulder fade route to the big boy there, number 88. So look for defense to kind of continue what they're doing. Uh, you may see um, Bethany open it up a little with some of those uh, – slant and goes or hitch and goes and, and things like that. But uh, defense is doing a good job. It was on the field a lot during that first half. So hopefully offense can come out here in this first drive, get something going, get some points on the board, and kind of get this fans back in it and get the team back in it. I'm going to ask you maybe what's an unanswerable question here, but maybe you got an answer for me. I'll we, try. we talk a lot about – a second half team, and I and you know I think that's one of those things that you can just see, right? I mean, you could tell. I mean, they are second half team. We've seen that pretty much all year long, even in the last year. Right? Yeah, same last year. Now, yeah. what makes a team a second half team? Uh, I mean, some of it is is kind of our strength program. We kind of wear people out. I mean, that's one thing that Coach Griffin prides himself on is that strength program. So we're stronger in the third and fourth quarter, and, and some of those teams kind of st we start to wear on those guys, and that big offensive line kind of pounds and pounds and pounds and makes some bigger holes for those running backs and things. So that's one thing that kind of goes into it. I think another thing about it is maybe the halftime adjustments. They go in there, they kind of see – what they're doing on offense, and they can make some adjustments related to what they're doing on offense and defense. So that may be part of it too. And and I mean, maybe I mean it's just kind of the crunch time, and yeah. and and we have a little more intestinal fortitude than some some other teams or something. Who knows? But uh, we need to obviously be a second half team today because first half uh, seven points on the board is not what we expected out of this team. Uh, probably definitely not what Coach Griffin expected either. We thought it was going to be a little bit lower scoring than the first couple weeks, but definitely not seven points in the first half. So this is a big, big drive right here. We talk about it all the time. The first drive of the second half is always a big, big drive. So got to get some points on the board here or at least get some momentum going on the offensive side of things. We'll get set for another Wayne's drive-in kickoff. Come on, everyone. Let's go to Wayne's. Also want to thank our third quarter sponsor, Mr. Sparky, for panel upgrades, smoke detector installations, circuits and wiring, emergency services. Call Mr. Sparky as the ball is going to go yep. into the end zone. We'll see what the Cash Bulldog offense can do to start the second half. Got a long field ahead of us, kind of what we're used to seeing on our side. Eli kicking it through the end zone. So they were able to kick it through the end zone there. Um, Wind's kind of died down. I'm trying to look at the flag out there. Cash Bulldog offense runs out onto the field. Down 10 to 7. Bethany with the late score in the first half. Yeah, let's see what we come out here in and see if we can get some momentum going. Kind of got stalled there in the second quarter. Yeah, right, right off to a great start, though. Right off the bat, there is another flag. Yeah. Just a little late getting out there, so. 
Still first down. We'll bring up the first and 15 now. So not obviously the start that you wanted, but. Right. We'll bring up the first and 15 again for the Cash Bulldogs. As we are still 12 minutes left in the third quarter here. Hunter Tate at the bottom of your screen. Andrew Toms in the back of the long man in the back foot with Hunter Glenn. Hunter Tate goes in motion from right to left. The handoff is going to be Andrew Toms up the middle. Nice run. It's uh, back to the original line of scrimmage, maybe an extra yard. It'll bring up a second and nine. Yeah, good job there. Six-yard gain. Unfortunately, we had the delay of gain, so now makes it a second and long here. But good positive run there for Andrew Toms. Your Tom's again in the back. He'll Hunter Tate at the bottom of your screen. Kind of Daniel split out to the left side. Had some chances on some deep balls earlier in the game, earlier in the second half. Just a little overthrown on two of them. So may come back to that as well. Hunter Tate in motion from right to left. The fake up the middle to Andrew Tom. Hunter Glenn looking down the field to Jalen Nido, who not able to come up with the catch. Bring up a third and nine for the Cash Bulldogs. Yeah, threw it where only Jalen can catch it. Uh, pretty well covered there, but threw it where only Jalen can catch it. Safe throw there. Fortunately, fell incomplete. So it brings up a third and nine. Let's see what we come up with here. I see an Andrew Tom's the lone man behind Hunter Glenn. Hunter Tate at the bottom of your screen. Hunter Glenn looks at the sideline for the play. Eleven twenty-one left in. Third quarter, it's kind of Daniels gets the handoff. Not much doing there. He's going to get up to about the 28-yard line, a couple yards short of the first down. We're going to fourth and two. Looks like we're going to stick the offense out here. Pick up a seven yards, fourth and short. This may just be Coach Griffin. No, he's going to punt it. Sending him. Yeah, the defense has been playing well outside yeah. of the you know that one long. They've had a couple long drives, but they've not given up much, and so maybe you're just playing a field position game here. Yeah, I mean you're only down by three, so there's no time to panic or anything like that. You, I mean, we've got a bunch of athletes back there, so you never know about the fake, but you're kind of far back in your territory. Let's see if Drake can get a good snaps, one out of here. Snaps a little low. Drake Jones, nice high nice punt. Nice high punt. Let's see. Kind of bounce we get here. Bounces uh, backwards all the way down to about the 49-yard line. We'll be down by number 33, Brady Wise, the Cash Bulldogs. Yeah, wish you would have got a little bit more of a better bounce there, but uh, let's see what the defense can do coming out. Not obviously the start that we wanted on the offensive side of the ball. Didn't definitely want to go three and out, but let's see if the defense can uh, get things going in this. Talk about body language. Body language just kind of looks, uh, you know, ah. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> kind of the fans too. I mean, just yeah. kind of not making much noise. I mean, there's nothing to really cheer about at the moment, but I mean, gotta get somebody needs to make a big play or get a lift, whether it be a big hit, a turnover, or something. That's a patient run by Gilliland, a big hit by Reed Line, but Gilliland able to get to the 49 yard line, a gain of about two yards on the play. Break up a second and eight. Yeah, in situations like that, you want your playmakers to kind of start stepping up. Jalen Nido on the outside, maybe he can get a big sack. Uh, Hunter Tate on the outside and maybe get a pick or force a fumble or something. I mean, somebody needs to step up, make a big play, and get the fans back into this thing and and get everybody back into it. Kind of a quick out again. Fake hand off the Gilliland. Same play we've been seeing quite a bit tonight over to Taylor Heim. Catches the ball and gets enough for the first yeah. down to about the 39-yard line. Another first down for the Bethany Broncos. Yeah, they're just kind of a little fake, uh, fake inside zone there and Hitting the hitch, and they're doing a good job of pitching and catching and making some positive yards. 9.45 left in the third quarter. As again, number seven, Taylor Heim at the bottom of your screen. Gilliland offset behind Adams, quarterback. Handoff is to Gilliland up the middle. Nice job of reading his blockers. Cuts it out to the outside. Gets all the way down, still fighting, down to about the 23-yard line. A gain of 16 for number 21, Jaden Gilliland, 6-foot, 200-pound. He's also just a sophomore for the Bethany Broncos, so we'll see him for a couple more years as well. So the Bethany Broncos coming off of another really good season last year. Has a lot of young talent, pretty evident out on the field. And we have a... I believe maybe an injury timeout on the field. We'll take that right here on the Oklahoma Sports Network.
Want to take the stress out of your next three months? Feet. We use them every day. Working, playing, and usually taking them for granted. If your feet hurt, see the professionals at Southwest Foot and Ankle Clinic. They've been serving Southwest Oklahoma for the past 36 years, providing the highest quality care and combining the latest technology with old-fashioned Oklahoma compassion. With three locations to serve you, Lawton, Duncan, and Altus. Call today or visit us online at swokfoot.com. We're back here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. The player shaking up his read line. He gets up and walks off the field on his on his own, so that's good news there. We now have 9.36 now left in the third quarter. Bethany offense comes back out onto the field, driving again. First down and 10 at the 23-yard line of the Cash Bulldogs. He'll land in the backfield with Adams, also number nine. That is Ebby Lechtenberg. Heim at the bottom of your screen, but there's going to be an off, uh, false, false start on the offense for Bethany. Yeah. So we'll take that at this point as they're driving down the field. They'll make it a first and 15. There's number 33, Jocelyn Malaska, is also on the field for the Bethany Broncos, put out to the right. The Cats Bulldogs need to come up with a stop here. Yeah. Gray Adams in the backfield. Fakes the hand off the gill and throws it over the middle and is wide open. That is number nine, Ebby Lechtenberg, who walks in for the touchdown. Yeah, just kind of a fake uh, inside zone again, kind of sneak out that inside receiver, kind of a step behind him and wasn't able to get there in time and takes a nine-point lead, about to make it potentially ten. Got the little swinging gate, kind of like we do, going to look for the numbers and Looks like they're going to bring it in and go ahead and kick the extra point here. Bethany now takes a 16 to 7 lead, 16 unanswered points, possibly 17 here by the Bethany Broncos. The kick attempt is up and it is going to be good. Bethany now leads this 17 to 7 with 9:31 left in the third quarter. We'll be right back in just a minute on the Oklahoma Sports Network. d landscaping and irrigation has been providing top rated professional landscape and irrigation services for the past 25 years they take your vision for that perfect landscaping project for your home new construction or business and make it a reality with their easy financing options you'll want to make sure to ask them about their seasonal services too 4d landscaping and irrigation call 510-9983 Welcome back to Ulrich Stadium here on the Oklahoma Sports Network of the Cash Bulldogs. Now trail by 10 to the Bethany Broncos as we get set for another Wayne's drive-in kickoff. Come on, everyone. Let's go to Wayne's two locations at 7 Southwest Sheridan, 6810 Cash in Lawton, Oklahoma. Cash Bulldogs now need an answer going down 10. No doubt about it. Got a, got a lot, a lot of football left. Uh, at this point in the El Reno game, we were down by maybe 21. So there's a lot of game left to be played, but just look flat right now. Need somebody to step up. Talked a little bit about it on the defensive side of the ball, but on the offensive side of the ball, the special game, special teams right here, we need, need a little, little pick-me-up here. So look for... In those situations, coaches always kind of look for their playmakers uh, to make a big play. So, might see Kynell get his hands on the ball, maybe Hunter Tate a little. And Almost kicked off. Another short kick. It's going to go out of bounds again. It goes out of bounds. Yeah, they're trying that directional, directional kick there and have kicked it out of bounds more often than not. But, I mean, with them only getting the ball at 30, it's not a – it's not a bad, you know, honestly. Yeah, it's not an end-all, be-all. I mean, Cash really does need a big play. You can get those on the kickoff return. So, really, if you know, that's a – you've seen that with teams with good return games. People, I saw that last year with Newcastle. Newcastle had – Well, this is kind of interesting. Last – if I'm not mistaken, last time they put the ball on 30. This time they're putting it on a 35. 35. So. So, maybe they'll move up to the 40 <laughs> next time. <laughs> We're just <laughs> – we'll take it. 
Kyle Daniels behind. Hunter Glenn, Hunter Tate in motion right to left. Gets and off. Cuts it up the middle. Nice little run there. Gained about six on the play. Yeah, good job there. Kind of getting some positive yards. Here's some cowbells ringing down here. The crowd, the crowd may be recognizing they need to get back into this game as well. We don't want to hear any cowbells. Mississippi State. Yeah, yeah you're Mississippi one of those State's guys, coming, yeah. To, coming yeah. to town. The old Baton Rouge. <laughs> Hunter Glenn goes up under center. Kynell Daniels in the backfield. Hunter Tate to the right. Goes in motion again. Hand off this time. Kynell Daniels up the middle. Got a hold. Very patient run all the way in to Bethany territory. Down to the Bethany Bronco 47. A gain of 12 on the play. Kind of like we talked about there. I mean, we, we kind of mentioned it right before the kickoff there. Kind of want to get the ball into the hands of your playmakers when you're kind of flat and things. So first first. Play goes to Hunter Tate. Second play goes to Kynell. Let's see if we get the ball back to Kynell right here and see if he can bust another one open. First and ten. Hunter Tate again in motion. And if again to Kynell Daniels off the right side. Nice stiff arm there. Another stiff arm all the way down to the 36-yard line. Very similar. Oh, very similar play to the one that he scored on earlier. Kind of faked the uh, outside zone there and then Run on the back side of that, hoping that that DN bites and goes all the way out. They're taking in motion again with some momentum here. It's kind of Daniels gets it down to the 30. Another gain of about six. Best oh, a little tonight. bit of tempo right here. Get them on their heels a little. Yeah, not allowed to get lined up. Hunter Glenn, the long guy there up under center. Have to kind of Daniels on the outside right side. Get some blockers. Able to get down to the 24-yard line. Another gain of six. Enough for another catch Bulldog first down. Again, we're going with the tempo right here. Kind of rushing to the line. Going to make a quick call from the sideline once everybody gets lined up. And Andrew Tom's behind Hunter Glenn. Hunter Tate out to your right. Kind of Daniels to the left. Goes a motion. Go. There. Hunter Tate is open, and he ah. just can't get it. It's just a little overthrown. Yeah, he's had him on a couple of opportunities. Just a, he's just a tad bit off tonight, throwing a little bit further than he would want to. And that one was a little bit better than the last one. Kind of put a little bit more air under that one, but Hunter still wasn't able to get underneath it. So brings up a second and long here. As Ethan Hood comes onto the field. Yeah, when you give him those opportunities, you want to hit those because I mean you don't get them many, you don't get them often. So when you have them, you want to hit them and. Unfortunately, we haven't hit any of those tonight and kind of put us a little bit behind the eight ball there. Brooklyn up under center. Hunter Tate in motion from right to left. Handoff will be to Kyle Daniels up the Got middle. Hold. Nice job all the way down to about the 14-yard line. Looks like he might be a tad short, so might go with the tempo here and go with a little Hunter Glenn special quarterback sneak. Yeah, this is a Hunter Glenn special. It's got it written all over it here. <laughs> But you've also got a third and short here. You kind of maybe have a down to play with. So you might uh, – no, it looks like they're going to go quarterback sneak. And they will get the first down. Another long run yeah. of about three yards, four <laughs> yards there for Hunter Glenn. Yeah, on those, like I said, we talked about it a little in the first half there. Offensive line just puts their hands in the dirt, gets lower than the defensive line, and Hunter kind of squeezes behind Alden there and just hopes that – they can get a little bit of a push and get the big first down. So it'll be a first and ten from about the ten and a half yard line, so they can get a first down. Hunter Tate in motion, right to left, handoff again, right to Kyle Daniels to the right side, leaps get over a man yeah. down to the one yard line. Good tough run there by Kynell. Kind of left his feet there, but still was able to get some push forward and get all the way down to about the two of the three. So need to punch this one in right here, get a little bit of momentum on our side, get the crowd back into this thing, and. See if we can fight back tonight. Andrew Toms in the backfield with Kyneel Dance. Hunter Glenn under center. Hunter Tate in motion. Handoff is to Andrew Toms. Stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Maybe loses a yard even. Yeah, great job of that defensive uh, end there coming off the edge. And I'll bring up a third and one. We do have, let's see, somebody Andrew. down the field. He gets up and kind of limps off the field. He's going to get off the field as number 31 Antonio Austin comes in still third and one so they can get a first down without actually scoring here yeah we need to punch this one in though right here got a lot of momentum going Hunter Tate in motion the handoff will be to Kyle there he is. get into the end zone for another catch Bulldog touchdown the second touchdown of the game 
Great job of the offensive line there, kind of get, leaving an outside area for him to run, and big touchdown there to bring us within four. Connell Daniels able to answer right back. Big thing about that drive is just getting some momentum on our side, seeing something positive happen, get the fans out of the out of their seats and up and clapping, and got a lot of game left to go, and see if defense can come up with a big stop here. And see like Angel on for the extra point. Kick is up, and it is going to good. be good. 17-14 now your score here in Cash, Oklahoma. We'll be right back in just a minute on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Becker Raybon Funeral Home has been serving the funeral needs of Southwest Oklahoma since 1940 and is owned by the Raybon family. We believe family ownership makes a great difference in the care and service your family receives. Their staff is eager to find ways to assist you. Whether it's with live streaming or benefit assistance, we can help. When it comes to measuring personal levels of service, there are other funeral homes, and then there is ours. Becker Raybon Funeral Home, 1502 Fort Sill Boulevard. We're back here on the Oklahoma Sports Network as Cash is able to respond and score a touchdown of their own. 17-14, now you score here at Cash, Oklahoma. 6-15 left here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. We thank you for joining us wherever you're joining us from. A beautiful Friday night here in Cash, Oklahoma as we get to watch some high school football, some Friday night lights here for a one district opener for both teams. Cash did exactly what they needed to do on that drive. Oh, no doubt about that. A little sluggish and uh, got some tempo going there. Stayed on the ground for the most part other than the missed long ball and had some tempo going and liked that drive right there by the offense. Eli. See, Eli's not lined up like he usually is, so maybe trying to Angle this one a little, put some air under it. Another Wayne's drive in kickoff. Come on, everyone, let's go to Wayne's. Yeah, see, so kind of an angle. A fair catch. Dropped it. Why did they blow the whistle? So, on a fair catch, if you drop it, I believe you're able to tackle the guy. Is that kind of correct? Okay, so we ran into an issue of that two years ago in the playoff game. Um against was it Blanchard that came here um, it was an that one I think involved an inadvertent whistle uh, and I can't remember what the rule was there I know it was on the sideline that game coach Griffin was obviously not happy with it because it was a big part of the game and referees had already played a little bit of a factor in that game and well, nonetheless, they get the ball yep. right there at the 29-yard line. Empty backfield. Empty backfield. Oh, see somebody Trey back. Adams. Still laying in motion from right to left. He looks to the right side. You know, he's had a problem with that to some degree. Yeah, throws that a little towards the out. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, he likes to get it out of his hand quick on that side. And kind of a new receiver he was throwing to right there. And he wasn't maybe as crisp on his route as some of the other guys are. And he kind of threw that before he even broke. And... Low and outside. It's number 85, Jared Malaska at the top of your screen. Number seven, giving Count. us fits. Yeah, Taylor Heim at the bottom of your yeah. screen. Gil Low. Lane in the backfield. Low and outside. Count 1-0. and oh. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah. Baseball playoffs about to start as well. That time he completes same, the pass. Yeah, yeah, same. same receiver there. Good Number job. Third and four. Number 85, Jared Malaska. Yeah. yeah, good job by George Harper there to kind of come up. Kind of seen that play over and over and over again. Like I said, don't be surprised if they come to a kind of a pump and go. Don't be surprised right here if they come back to the hitch route. Because, I mean, you've only got five yards. It's kind of a five-yard stop route. The DB has kind of got to make sure he backpedals to get out so that way he doesn't get burned deep. So Yeah, they're giving him some cushion. Yeah, look at number 33 right here. Giving yeah. him some cushion. Doing an option, option here. Option to Gilliland, and it's going to be enough for the first down out to about the 42-yard line. First time we kind of saw an option. They, they, earlier in the game they kind of did one, but it was a keep only. And uh, kind of the pitch was a little forward, so it technically might go pass. down as a pass. But uh, good job there, kind of getting on the outside there and getting the first down. Getting some of the momentum back. Last thing you want after, as an offense, after giving up a touchdown defense, is go three and out. 
So good job for, uh, by the Bethany Broncos. Gray still in a quarterback in the backfield there. Set to pass again. All kinds of pressure, and he's going to be go brought down. down and sacked at the 37-yard line. A loss of five on the play. Great job of the D-line there getting penetration. He's going to try and throw it a little bit deeper than their normal pass routes, and D-line did a great job of getting in there, and then ultimately Joseph Brown, big sophomore in there, getting the big sack, coming up with a little, a little, a little flexing. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, get a sack. Of course <laughs> yeah, you can. Yeah. Those big boys like to dance. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh yeah. Oh, yeah. They got some moves. Second 15 now for Bethany. 428 left in the third quarter. Gray drops back again. Pressure by Jalen Nido. And oh, got another. Another sack. He might get back to line of scrimmage. Yeah. Maybe loss of a yard. Maybe on loss the play. of a yard. Great job of the D-line again getting penetration. Jalen. Aiden Robinson. Yeah, Jalen. Yeah. Those guys are getting a bunch of push up front. And what that does is gets this crowd back into it, what we've been waiting on all night. And Jalen Nido begging the crowd to get back into it. They do need to get a third down stop here. Third and 16. 350 and ticking third quarter. Yeah, this would be a huge stop for the defense. Obviously, they got one first down, but. Don't want to let him get another one. And Cash looks to be maybe bringing some pressure. There's a flag. Delayed delay game. game. That will make it a third and delay 21. The yeah, they're very – so we like to hear. Y'all can hear it at home. The crowd's yeah. getting very much into it now. And that's what happens after a touchdown. Defense gets back on the field, gets a couple sacks in a row. Everybody's getting back excited. And 88 is on the field, same side there. That's Peyton Toll again with Taylor Heim at the bottom of your screen. Third and very long. Want to keep everything in front. Want to avoid Gray any penalties. He's looking deep for Toll. He's being pressured. He throws that one up for grabs, and he throws it out of bounds. That's a stop for the Cash Bulldogs. Great job by the defense there, forcing the, forcing the punt here. Oh, what is going on on the outside over here? Please There's a flag and Jalen Nido. Roughing the passer. Uh, I believe that's on Jalen Nido. I saw him throw his uh, mouthpiece down. Didn't see that flag. Yeah, I can't. Didn't really see where the. Maybe got his hands up around the face. and I mean, he was running around out there. It's unfortunate right there because that was a big stop of the defense. But And that one, I think, is an automatic first down. Yeah, that is an automatic uh, first down. It's a killer when you have a third and 20. And yeah. Stop. I mean, you like the effort, and I, I didn't really see the play, so I don't know if his hands got up around there or he was a couple steps late, but see if the defense can step up again and get another stop. Crowd doing all they get can. Get into it, yeah. Great in the back with Gill in again. And now right up the middle, not anything doing there. Again, that's number 68 at Robinson on the stop. Yeah, defensive line is really starting to take over a little. They're kind of getting some big-time penetration there. A couple sacks in a row, a couple hurries in a row, and then a short yardage run. So defensive line is really starting to take control. So see if that can continue. Bring up a second 12 for the Bethany Broncos, 2.40 left in the third quarter. Gray looks to the sideline as Gilland in the backfield with him. Number 33, Jocelyn Malaska on the bottom of your screen with Taylor Rahim. Peyton Toll up top in the slot. Kind of that little Pitch pass up, again. Up to number 33. Nice job of Hunter Tate forcing out there. And uh, he's going to be stopped right at the original line of scrimmage. Bring up a third and ten. George Harper. So George Harper might be down on the play. The injury. Yeah. We're going to take that with them right here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. At Bill Miller and Noble Heating and Air Conditioning, we take pride in our quality air conditioner and heater repair and replacement services, as well as providing the highest customer satisfaction. 
Bill Miller and Noble Heating and Air Conditioning has been serving Lawton and the surrounding area for over 25 years. We have the knowledge, equipment, and trained technicians to take care of all your heating and cooling needs. Give us a call. Bill Miller and Noble Heating and Air, 355-1811. Wayne's Drive-In in Lawton, a tradition since 1950, with two great locations at number 7 Northwest Sheridan Road and Wayne's 2 at 6810 Northwest Cash Road, serving the same old-fashioned hamburgers you know and love and grew up with. Maybe it's Wayne's famous steak fingers, or maybe you're in the mood for a sissy cheeseburger, chicken sandwich, salad, pizza, or just an order of onion rings. And don't forget Wayne's famous sweet tea or cherry limeade. Cruise on in before or after the game. Wayne's, number 7 Northwest Sheridan Road and 6810 Northwest Cash Road. Let's go to Wayne's! We're back here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. George Harper comes off the field. Another third and long here. Gray drops back again, looking for Taylor Heim deep. Flushed out of the pocket, throws it up deep for grabs. Really not throwing Great there for anybody. <laughs> so that will bring up a fourth down. Fourth down. Looks like they're bringing the punt team on, which is understandable with this side of the 50. We have a fourth and 10, 153 left in the third quarter. Cash gets the stop they need. Zach Johnson, who's going to run that in for a touchdown for the Cash Bulldogs. And the Cash Bulldogs take the lead. Zach Johnson coming back off the injury in the off week, blocks the kick and runs it in for a touchdown. There is a flag. I believe that will be celebration. I think that will be celebration. As we see this on the instant replay yeah. here. Zach Johnson able to block the kick, pick the ball up, and then run it all the way in for a touchdown. The big play that the Cash Bulldogs have been waiting for. Yeah, kind of that one of those rugby-style kickers, and they, he's seen him do it a couple different times. Zach was able to get in there, bounce just perfectly up to him, able to pick it up and take it all the way in for the big, big score. One of those big plays we've been talking about and waiting for all night. Thank you for the lot and firefighters for supporting our instant replay. You're able to see that one there again. Zach Johnson, one of those guys that you don't see him out. I mean, you see him out there, but he's just kind of there. Yeah. But when he makes a play, he makes a big play. I know the early in the El Reno, he uh, was big in that El Reno game, and he's kind of been hurt since then. Yeah, it looks like we got a celebration penalty, too, so I think they'll enforce that on the kickoff. So we'll have to kick off a little bit further, but it's understandable for a celebration after that. The kick is going to be up and good as Cash Bulldogs now take a 21-17 lead with 145 left in the third quarter. We'll be right back here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Back here on the Oklahoma Sports Network, we'll get set for another Wayne's drive-in kickoff. Come on, everyone, let's go to Wayne. Zach Johnson with the punt block in return for the touchdown, giving the Cash Bulldogs a lead once again after 17, uh, 17 to 14 lead that Bethany had. Eli Angel back to kick this ball off. Another high, short kick. It's, it's gonna go get it, go get it, go get it, go get it! Cash has a chance to jump ball, bounces around, Ugh. and they do are able, they're able to return this one out to the outside. So it gets all the way out to the edge and pushed out finally at the 43. That was a dangerous play. <laughs> yeah, it's a jump ball essentially. As one of the as one of those guys on the outside out there, he's got to come up and kind of fair catch that one like he did the last time. But lucky for us, he didn't. But then after the jump ball kind of happened, kind of took everybody out of their lanes and swag on. Come on, DJ Skeeter. DJ Skeeter <laughs> over there. Yeah, he. Uh, <laughs> 
Bethany comes back out onto the field, now down again. Talk about Cash being a second-half team, and no doubt we've seen a little more life from the Cash Bulldogs this half. It's Gray Adams again onto the field, leading <laughs> Bethany Broncos at quarterback. Time at the bottom of your screen. Gilliland in the backfield with number nine, Ebby Lechtenberg, as Vincent Saylor is showing off his dance moves here. <laughs> Cash defense again, that is number 24, Drake Jones, and number 60, Aiden Robinson on the stop. Yeah, coming up from his linebacker position right there, getting a big hit on him, and forcing the no yardage gain right here. We need a camera in the booth. I get a little worked up every now and then. I think you guys will get some get, uh, out of that. Get uh, DJ Skeeter in here, gets me going, and Cash Bulldogs get me going with the 21-17 lead now, kind of out of breath a little, but uh, we'll make it. We'll make it. We'll make it through here. Second ten, just under a minute now left in the third quarter. The handoff again up the middle, gain of about oh four or five yards on the play. Yeah, brings up another big third down here for the defense. See if we can get another big stop and get the ball right back to our offense. Yeah, defense is, defensive line is doing a much better job in the second half of getting that push and kind of pushing those guys back, messing up the timing of the run plays and messing up the timing of those quick passing plays by getting some push and getting their hands up. Third and seven now, 23 seconds left in the third quarter. That's Gray Adams in the back to with Gilliland. Pate toll over the middle. It's going to be throw to the outside. Rally nice up. job of breaking Great down job. by Carlos Harbin. Great job by the defense there. Kind of see what they do here at midfield. Carlos Harbin did exactly what he was supposed to do. He helped the Hunter take came and finished that playoff. That's how we'll end the third quarter. we got an exciting one here in Cash, Oklahoma. As the Cash Bulldogs now have a 21-17 over the Bethany Broncos. We'll be right back with fourth quarter in just a minute on the Oklahoma Sports Network. We're back here on the Oklahoma Sports Network in the fourth quarter. I want to thank our fourth quarter sponsor, Vincent Saylor State Farm. Like a good neighbor, Vincent, Sta Vincent Saylor State Farm is there. You can call Vincent at 580-699-2771. You can practice your dance moves with Vincent. Absolutely. If you want to, he can show you some stuff. A great game here in Cash, Oklahoma. We talked about Cash being a second-half team and Definitely a lot more life in the team. Definitely a lot more life in the stands. No doubt about that. As Bethany will have the ball with the fourth and four here. Kind of an interesting position that they're in, being down going to the fourth quarter. It's a new punter back there, so we're going to play it safe. Um, but he's still going to punt it away. The nice, high, high, really, punt. really high kick above. I the think press he's going to take a bounce for us. Oh, oh no! Takes a really good bounce inside the 15 down to the 14. Yeah, good job of getting that one out of there. High, high punt and took a bounce for them and pushed us all the way back to the 15 yard line. It's a long way to go, but see if we come back with some of that tempo that we were running with before. Look for a heavy dose of Kynell here as well. I think you go back to the tempo just like we had yeah. before. Yeah, I think so. Uh, it showed that kind of um, put them on their heels a little so if we can get a big run or two here on first down I expect uh, us to maybe come back to that at some point in this drive. Zach Johnson big play just a minute ago in here out to your bottom of your screen Kyle Daniels the low man in the backfield Hunter Tate in motion handoff is Kyle Daniels up the middle nice job but he looked a couple of guys ah. able to get up to the 31 gain of 16 yards for Kynell Daniels. Yeah, just kind of one guy away. Luckily, that safety was able to come up and wrap him up. Looked like he almost had a chance to break another, another long one, but he's been running the ball great tonight. 
No telling how many yards he has at this point, but he's doing a great job. The offensive line is creating some a lot, some big holes here in the second half, and kind of what we talked about a little. That that goes back to our strength program and some of that type of stuff. And as the game wears wears on, we start wearing that defensive line out and creating big holes. And here goes the Hunter Tate, able to get about three yards yeah. on the play. A little bit of pushing and shoving going on down there. Yeah, at this point in the game, you've been playing for three quarters. <clears throat> haven't, haven't seen much of that, but at some point in the game, it kind of always happens a little. But it's fun to watch. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it definitely brings some uh, excitement <laughs> to the game. <laughs> Number three total up 42-20 on six minutes to go over number 10, Cushing, as Hunter Glenn goes up under center. Kyle Daniels behind him. Hunter Tate in motion. Zach Johnson out to the left. Hound up to there he goes. Daniels. Got a lot of room, and they're going to have to try to catch him. He got a man chasing him down, but Kyle Daniels has speed ah! tripped up at the 18 yard line. He had the angle on him, and good job by him to kind of trip him up. But another big, big game by Kynell. The 49 offensive, yard run. Offensive line is absolutely creating some huge holes for Kynell. And He's finding those holes and making some big, big runs. They're getting the tempo. Zach Johnson hurries off the field. Hunter Glenn goes up under center. Hunter Tate in motion. Go right back to it. Nice job looting a guy, getting to the outside. But gets down to about the seven. Another good game. Huge game by Kynell right now. I'd love to know. Be really how many yards, yards he's yeah. got. Because, I mean, you had a 76 run right off the bat and another 49. So, he could be over the 200-yard mark at this point. Handoff again to Kyle Daniels on the outside edge. He's having to stretch this one to the outside. Is he able to get in? Uh, he's in. He gets it in, but there will be two flags. There will be a hole. I would think on the outside it's going to be a hole on re line, unfortunately. I think Kynell may need a little bit of a breather. Yeah, he was, he was he's <laughs> laboring on that one just a little bit. Looked like me running on the outside. It is a hold. A 10 yard from the spot of the foul. Number four, Poto leads number eight, Hildo, 38 to 24. That game also in the fourth quarter. Clinton all over. The only other district game really going on right now in 4 a one Clinton up 46 to 7 over Elgin. Number one, Wagner, big lead, 45 to 0 over Cleveland with five minutes left to go in the fourth quarter. Unfortunately, that pushes us back. I mean, now I mean, it's first and goal from the 15. So, got it. Got Plenty downs to play with to get these 15 yards, but one thing that on those long runs and things like that, I mean, Reed Lyon does a great job, Jalen Nido on the outside blocking for those long runs, but unfortunately that time got his hands on the outside and got called for the holding. Kynell gets it back, though. Yeah, Kynell gets the ball again, big hit. Yeah. Brought down at about the 10-yard line. Gets about five yards back. Gets, the, gets back to the original line of scrimmage there. Yeah, brought down by Alex Millspa there. He got a little excited about that one. 9.35 left to go in the fourth quarter. Yeah, this would be a big score right here. Kind of put a little bit of uh, cushion out in front of us. You'd like a little more separation. Yeah, they they uh, they obviously have the ability for a quick strike offense. They're a no-huddle team, so but they are kind of a dink and dunk team. So the more you can get out ahead of them, the better. And it went up under center again. Quick pass out to Hunter Tate. Makes somebody miss. That's a little juke move. And he's Got it. walking in for the touchdown. Nice job by Reed Lyon blocking on the yeah. outside. Reed Lyon did a great job, and Hunter just kind of made one or two people miss with a little stutter step there and gets in for the big touchdown to put us up by 10 with the extra point coming. Cash now leads 27 to 17. Second half team emerges once again. Hunter Tate did a nice job there, but that was a one you give a read line. Oh, looks like we're going to go for it here. Yeah, they're going for it here. Oh. It's a pass. Touchdown. Oh, wait, no. We, we have a flag. False start. It'll be a false start. So I assume we'll just up and kick this one now. Nice little wrinkle there, though. It was open. <laughs> Maybe because they blew the whistle, but <laughs> I like but the look there. You give them something to look at. Yeah, future, I mean, yeah. the swinging gate. I mean, if you can get some points, let's get some points. I mean, because that goal. would have put you out to a 12-point lead, so now it's two touchdowns rather than now for the 25-yard extra point. Another flag on the play. Kick is good. Let's see what the flag is. 
When it comes behind there, it could be something on defense jumping or something like that. But, no, it looks like it might be a chop block on us. Is a chop block. That's going to make it a difficult extra point now. Yeah. Well, you, I guess you would push it back, what, 10? Eli's got the leg, no doubt about it, but... As they talk it over here, you catch the uh, all the scores from around the area on the Facebook page, on the Oklahoma Sports Network Facebook page on final score. Player of the week, kind of. Player of the week, yeah. Kyle Daniels making a strong case for that one. Yeah, Kyle Daniels should be involved in that here at some <laughs> point. A couple of touchdowns, at least yeah, 180, 200 yards probably, maybe more than that. Let's see. Maybe they're going to enforce it on the kickoff. Yeah. Yeah, so the extra point will be good. So the score will now be 28-17. to The Cash Bulldogs lead the Bethany Broncos. We'll be right back here in just a minute on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Since 1908, Cameron University has served students from all over the world. With nearly 50 degrees in two-year, four-year, and graduate programs, we have something to inspire you. Health and wellness facilities plus a wide variety of clubs and activities will help you find your perfect fit. Small class sizes allow you to be yourself while discovering your future potential as part of the Aggie family. Come experience the Axe. Enroll today at www.cameron.edu. We're back here on the Oklahoma Sports Network in the fourth quarter. The Cash Bulldogs lead this one 28 to 17 in the 4A1 district opener over the Bethany Broncos. And we're talking about off the air how this one is how their Broncos is spelled. Yes. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of interesting things with the English language. When you, <laughs> the Denver Broncos are spelled only with the C, and I, I believe maybe UCO might have an H. Uh, so, do you call them Bronchos or do you call them Broncos? I'm stick with Broncos. I've never heard of a Broncho. No, so. I haven't either. But I'm from New Orleans, so we're yeah. You're a different breed of yeah, people down there. We're we're. We're, we're more interested in the racing ponies. <laughs> As we get set for another Wayne's drive-in kickoff. Come on, everyone. Let's go to Wayne's. Eli Angel says to kick this one off from the 25 this time because of the penalty. Looks like he's going to try and kick this one a little bit further. And he does kick down low. Nice low bar kick. Yeah, the problem you get, like we talked about with it's that low kick. Yeah, lots okay. of flags all over the place. He's got a good return, Eli Angel. <laughs> Makes the tackle. We love kicker tackles. Yeah. He's not your normal kicker, though. Yeah. So don't run up in there and think you're going to truck him or run straight up and down. He's one of those <laughs> Pat McAfee guys, yes, right? Yes. Yeah. I think that'll push him way back, though. Looks like there was a hold or something. Probably get with those low line drive kicks. We talked about it at one point during the first half. Is I mean, you don't get your guys a lot of time to get down there. So what happens is. They get a lot of momentum going forward and pick up a bunch of chunk yardage before your uh, kickoff team is able to get down there. So might kind of stick to uh, some of those high directional kicks as we move forward in the season. We have first and 10 from the 23 yard line. Yeah, let's see if 24. the defensive line can stay kind of on par to what they've been doing the last couple drives. They've been getting a ton of penetration. Adams up under center this time with Gillen behind him. Going to fake the hand. Oh, the hand no, he's going to hand it off this time. The left side. Breaks a couple of tackles. But, again, great job of the defensive line there. Look, Big Joseph Brown was in there quick and kind of got his hand on him, kind of messed the timing of the play up a little. And it was a big hole there, but uh, was able to only get about five yards because of the penetration and the big paw getting on him. So gain of five yards there by Gill and it'll bring up a second and five for the Bethany Broncos. As number nine, Ebby Lechtenberg is pushed out to the right. Gill again the lone guy behind Adams. Adams almost falls down, does a nice job of handing it off to Gill but nothing doing there. No gain on the play. No, kind of came out with a different set. They they only went under center maybe twice so far in the game, and they've gone under center for the last two plays. The first two times that they went under center, they kind of did a fake bootleg play there. So interesting to see why they went. Maybe they think that they have a better better chance there and not getting as much push from the D-line. 
Bring up a third and four. I think Taylor Heim is on the top side of the ah. screen. Yeah, Bulldogs are going to jump offside. This will be a first down for Bethany Broncos. Yeah, those guys have kind of pinned their ears back the last couple drives. That was a good idea by the Broncos there to uh, decide to use that against them and get a cheap first down there. Well, they're first and 10. 7.48 left to go in the fourth quarter. Bethany really needing to score here on this drive. Now down 11 in this game. And not your quick strike <laughs> offense. No, they're kind of a dink and dunk offense. As Gray Adams goes up under center again with number 21, Jaden Gilliland. He's had a nice game in the backfield. It's fake there they're going to go with the All kinds defensive of lines in there again. Nice catch. I believe yeah. that is. It's big 88 there. 88 Peyton Toll on the outside. He flexes a little bit as well. All kinds of pressure. Nice pass by Gray Adams. Yeah, nice job there kind of getting out of the pressure. Great job of the D-line to get in there quickly, but good job by him kind of avoiding that pressure, finding his big target and getting it out there um, for the big first down pickup, which makes it second and short, which leaves the whole playbook open for the Broncos. 7-10 left to go in the fourth quarter. Going back to their normal shotgun formation. And throw the quick out, it looks like. Yeah, to the big Great job. Uh, that will be enough for a first down. Good coverage by Brady Wise there, but not a whole lot you can do on that quick out route there. Six fifty-seven left now in the third quarter. Bethany approaching the Cash Bulldogs side of the field. Both teams have all three timeouts left, so there's a lot of game left to be played, obviously. Adams back in shotgun. Gillan to the right side. Hyman Toll up top. He's going to look out to the right side. Kind of a Gill land. A nice job of eluding a couple tackles. Able to get into Cash Bulldog territory. Down to about the 49. Gain of about four on the play. Right there, they kind of looked for that deep ball, kind of like we talked about there in the first half. They kept motioning that guy out and getting out to him immediately. That time, took a look downfield, didn't see anybody open, so he came down to his check down, uh, picked up some big yardage there. So good job by the defense there covering deep and then rallying up to make the tackle for a short yardage gain. Adams again in the shotgun. Fakes going on the outside out here. Again, ducks his head. Hunter job does like yeah smart decision there by Hunter go Glenn. low <laughs> yeah Hunter <laughs> take to go low I mean you can't uh, you can't meet him up top because that's just yeah, he's gonna win too many battles yeah on top. We do have a player down on the field for Bethany we'll take well, a time a out here on the them. Oklahoma Sports Network. It's a calling that's kept us free. It's a place to belong. What's the calling? It's doing a job that makes a difference. Serving your community and your country. It's part-time service where the impact is full-time. What's your calling? Air Force Reserve. We're back here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. You're watching Cash Bulldogs football. Number seven, Taylor Heim, able to get off the field, walk off the field for the Bethany Broncos. Good news there. 28 to 17, the score. Bethany now driving with 6:15 left here in the fourth quarter. Really needing a score here. Slowly, methodically moving this ball down the field. Just like Vincent said, they are not a big play team. They are a possession team. They've got really good possession receivers. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're more they're more of a dink and dunk type spread than than your normal push it down field spread. But obviously, they had the big play uh, there to, on their second touchdown, so they do have the ability to make a big play. But still, a lot of time left, especially with three timeouts. Gillian motions out She's to the right. Fake. He's there look we go. Out to Abby Lechtenberg again. Nice job there. Yeah, great job there by Luke and by Luke Edmondson and Keegan Fink to kind of stick with their receivers. We talked about that earlier. We said at some point they're going to pump that little screen route and try and take a shot downfield, and that's exactly what they did right there. But we were up to the challenge on a great coverage downfield by the both safety Edmondson and cornerback Fink. Finkel. Einstein Finkel. Einstein. <laughs> it's Fink, I know. <laughs> Adams again in the backfield with 
the running back we've been seeing all night long. He's going to look that way again. It's kind of a wheel route, but he escapes some pressure. Zach Johnson almost gets him, escapes a little more pressure, and finally cut down at the 25. Again, enough for a, a first Gray down. Adams, nice job of scrambling there by Gray Adams. Yeah, Coach Griffin talked about that prior to the game. Kind of was a little nervous about his scrambling ability and his running ability. That's the first time we've really kind of seen him get loose tonight. So, uh, But when he was out there, made a couple of people miss, couldn't practice, bring him to the ground, a big run there and keep this drive alive. And Gilland in the backfield with Gray Adams. Number 85, Jeremy Alaska, on the bottom of your screen. Handoff is to Gilliland. Zach Johnson does a nice job of tripping him up. Gain of about four yards on the play. Yeah, good job of stretching it out there by, by Zach, but uh, good cut inside on that. But luckily, Zach was able to stick his paw out there and get him to the ground. So good play on both sides there. Pick up a four on the carry, second down. This is about where the defense kind of bows their neck a little, and hopefully we can get a stop here. 5.08 left in the fourth quarter. Adams gets the snap. And there's going to be a, a flag. Off, yeah, I'm going to push it back, I think. A false start. No. Oh, it looks like they're pointing our way. Penalty marker on the play. Oh, no, he's he, – Dead ball. False start. Yeah, okay. He, yeah, he pointed the wrong, he pointed the wrong way at first. Uh, yeah. Moving back five yards, make it a second and 11. 5.04 left to go in the game. Let's catch a storm back again here in the second half. Take the 11-point lead. A uh, little backing up music right there. Beep, beep. All kinds of sound effects going on here. <laughs> From in this booth and next door. Yeah. Little, oh, nice little play there. Pitch to number 33, Zach Johnson. It will yeah. stretch that out. Yeah, they've ran that one a couple times tonight. Uh, kind of a little inside, kind of a speed sweep like we do, but they do it uh, out of the gun formation. And the one good thing about that is with that kind of that little toss, if he does happen to drop it or miss it, it's an incomplete pass. Um, so you see teams now kind of go into that, so that way there's no running back quarterback exchange issues. I'll make it a third and seven. Big play right here. Let's get some push defense. Run. Quick out there, incomplete, make it a fourth down. He overthrows that just a little bit. Yeah, Hunter Tate did a good job kind of getting his hands up. But didn't necessarily get to block it, but uh, probably messed up the sight line of the receiver there. So big, big stop here if we can get this on fourth down. Looks like they are bringing in a field goal unit. Possibly. We'll see what happens here. They are down yeah. 11. Got a good kicker, so this would put them within a one-score game. This will be a 30, about a 38-yard field goal attempt. Interesting call here. Catch back and play and say the snap is a little bit low. The kick is up, though, and it is going to be no good. No good. Yeah, it's good. 28-20 to 20 now the score. Bethany comes within one That's score. We'll be right back here in just a minute. The last four minutes on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Looking for an opportunity to advance in the workplace? Republic Paperboard Company in Lawton, Oklahoma offers competitive wages as well as excellent benefits. Republic is a quality producer of paperboard products used in the manufacturing of gypsum wallboard with advanced technology and a committed staff and makes them one of the premier paperboard companies in the U.S. using 100% recycled paper fiber. Republic Paper partners with many local organizations to build a better community. Go to republicpaperboard.com. We're back here on the Oklahoma Sports Oklahoma Network. And surrounding Bethany states for over 60 years. Down. Only eight points, one possession game with 440 left here in the fourth quarter. As we bump, have, bump, bump. As Vincent now is singing. So we've got singing <laughs> and dancing here. This is turning into American Idol up yeah. here. I'm a full-time show, ladies and gentlemen. He is. He's a one-man show. Get another Wayne's drive-in kickoff. Come on, everyone. Let's go to Wayne's. So do you think they kick the ball deeper? They do have three timeouts left. Now, all game, they've been doing that fake onside Correct. deal. So I think we kind of expect that because obviously, as you see right here, we got Hunter Glenn, 
We've got Keegan Fink. We've got uh, Jalen Nido on this front line. So we're expecting them right here to do some sort of onside deal, but looks like they're going to change their mind maybe. But we got the hands team out here just in case. They haven't kicked the ball deep really all night. They are lined up a they little are. bit different. Yeah. yeah, let's see here. He's going to kick it deep anyway. Probably the best kick of the game, actually. It's going to go all the way into okay, the end zone yeah. for a touchback. Yeah, got to be careful on that there right there, though, number 11. Uh, Carlos Harbin was kind of – I mean, if that ball bounces backwards, backwards, yeah, we have some issues there. But luckily it bounced right on into the end zone. We take over at the 20-yard line, see if we can get this run game going again and start eating on some of this clock. So the Bethany Broncos now are going to trust in their defense to try to get a stop, which is what they need here. They do have all three timeouts. Both teams have all three timeouts left with 440 left in here the fourth quarter. Might see us go be a little bit more deliberate, but uh, yeah, I think you're we're probably, pretty we're pretty deliberate as it is. So now we've been showing a lot of rhythm, you know, moving pretty quickly. Yeah. But that could hurt you here if it doesn't work. Right. But you but may I think you get out of that rhythm and it may hurt you too. Yeah, I think you're gonna keep the ball on the ground. Hunter Tate in motion, hand off to Kanye Daniels, all the way out to about the 28, 29 yard line, pretty close to a first down. It'll be a second and short. Yeah, defense, uh, offensive line has done a great job here in the second half, creating some big holes and creating some big push. Uh, and finding some, and Kynell's found those holes and been able to take advantage of it and get positive yards on just about every run. He said, here, what we were talking about a little earlier, kind of being a little bit more deliberate, going to let that clock run all the way down uh, and snap this ball under four minutes. 4.07 now left in the fourth quarter. Hunter Glenn up under center. Hunter Tate in motion. The handoff's going to be up the middle again to Kynell Daniels. Gets the first down. Yep. It's going to buy us a little bit more time now. And the event is going to start looking at using timeouts here. Yeah, I believe so too. Because right now we're in that four minutes off, four minute offense. So what you're doing right now is you're trying to trying to eat as much clock as possible. You're going to let that clock run all the way down if they're not calling timeouts. So right now we got 20 seconds left on the play clock. We're not even lined up yet, which is a great deal. We're now under 340. We'll probably snap this snap with under 330. So great job at the four-minute offense right there by the Bulldogs. Zach Johnson in motion. Hannah's going to be to Zach Johnson. Who cuts it up. Nice cutback. Another gain of about six or seven yards there. Yeah, I haven't seen him carry the ball much this year. It was good. We saw him uh, on the big punt block there. and. Was able to pick it up and score the big touchdown there to kind of get some of the momentum back on our side when we took the lead 21 to 17. As the clock approaches the three minute mark here. Yeah, I'm surprised. Uh, hey, I'm surprised we're going to snap it this quick. I don't know, I'm trying to draw them all sides. Zach Johnson again in motion. Again, Bethany uh, letting a lot of time run off here. Zach Johnson again in motion. Handoff's going to be up the middle of Kynell Daniels. Looks like he's going to get another first down, though. On the spot, but it does look like a first down. We'll make sure they call it a first down here. Looks like Bethany is finally going to use one of those timeouts. Yeah, Bethany's going to take a timeout. We'll take it with them here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Sign Company has been serving Oklahoma and surrounding states for over 60 years. As a family-owned business, our focus has always been on driving people to your door, not just selling you a sign. From custom sign design and manufacturing to installation and service, AeroSign has the knowledge and experience to deliver the ideal sign for you while using materials of the highest quality to ensure that your sign will look great for years and years to come. We design and manufacture our signs for longevity so you get the greatest return on investment possible. AeroSign Company, helping your business thrive since 1950. We're back here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Fourth quarter, 249 left here. Cats Bulldogs trying to put this one away. Bethany finally takes a timeout here on this drive. Now they have two remaining, down eight. Yeah, if we can keep getting five, six, seven yards a pop, we, we could maybe run this thing out. But still a lot of time left, only a one-score game. Got to score and get the two-point conversion and tie this thing up. So Zach Johnson goes in motion. The handoff's going to be to Kyle Daniels up the middle again. Really not much there. Maybe a gain no. of about one. Looks like they're going to use another timeout here. That's another timeout. We'll take that again with them here on the Oklahoma Sports Network.
Phillips Music Company is now the largest and most complete music store in Southwest Oklahoma. And they're excited to be your source for all Fender guitars and accessories with band instruments from Yamaha and Con Selmer, guitars from Ibanez, Paul Reed Smith, and Siegel, the latest in music tech from Roland, Yamaha, and Line 6, and a great selection of recording hardware and software. All at the best price with great local service and lessons available on most instruments. Visit PhillipsMusic.com to shop online or stop by Phillips Music 107 Southwest Sheridan Road. We're back here on the Oklahoma Sports. And we're back here on the Oklahoma Sports <laughs> Network. 242 left to go. Bethany uses their second timeout. One timeout remaining. Down 28-20 and 242 left. Hunter Glenn goes up under center. Kyle Daniels in the backfield. Zach Johnson to the left. Hunter Tate in motion. Hamps going to be to Hunter Tate. Nice job of eluding a couple of guys. He needs to just probably hold on to the yeah. ball there and go down. Gain of about you know, two or three yards there on the play. That'll bring up a third down. Yeah, I think they'll hold on to this okay. one if they can keep us – at fourth down, I think they'll call it. So I think what we may do here is run it all the way down and call a timeout or see what Coach Griffin decides to do. But what you definitely want to do is run this thing all the way down. We shouldn't have to snap the ball until at least two minutes left, the under two minutes left, but I think we may call a time. Yeah, there's 12 seconds left on the play clock, about 2.07 now on the game clock. He's going to let run down. Call he's going to call a timeout. Yeah. So. Looks like we're going to have another timeout here at Old Rick Stadium, and we'll take that with them here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Back here on the Oklahoma Sports Network as Cash calls the timeout. 156 remaining in this game. Yeah, get the first down here. You uh, pretty much ice it. Um, but uh, you don't. They, uh, they'll probably call a quick timeout. And they'll have plenty of time. Plenty of time. Hopefully, if, if we don't get it, we get a good punt out of there, make them go the length of the field. Kynell Daniels behind Hunter Glenn. Yeah, I expect either Kynell or Hunter, Glenn, Hunter Tate to get the ball here. But Got a bevy of receivers to the left. Hunter Tate also goes that way, tries to get some blockers out there. Not anything doing at all. Bethany's going to take a timeout here, it looks like. Yeah, I think Coach Griffin probably wanted Hunter to get on the outside there. Kind of cut it up a little early, but good penetration by the Bethany defensive front also there. Bethany calls a timeout. We'll be right back here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Back to Cash Bulldog football here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Cash now faced the fourth and seven. Likely going to have to punt this ball away. Giving Bethany another shot. They've got about a minute and 50 left. So they're going to have yeah. a little bit of time. Want to make sure you get a good snap here. Want to make sure that the uh, punter, Drake Jones, uh, catches it clear, cleanly and gets it out of there. Might have a big rush on. Hopefully we can get this thing pinned it's around the 20-yard line, maybe inside the 20 a little. Bethany with 150 left, trying to 
come back again after being come back on. Now 28 to 20. I believe that was their third and final timeout, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Still showing one on the scoreboard. Still showing one on the board, but that's but their last so one. So they'll have to go to the. Well, let's see if we get this one out here. That's number again, you know, number 24, Drake Jones, back to the punting duties here. Good nice snap. snap. Get it out of there. Nice kick by Drake Jones. See if it takes a good, a good bounce. Here. bounce. Dangerous catch, but caught there at the 27. So the Broncos are going to have to march 73 yards with a minute 43 left to go in this game. No timeouts, but in high school football, you get to get the clock stoppage uh, on first downs. They also like to uh, throw those quick out routes and throw those quick uh, hitches where they can easily get out of bounds as well. But they're going to have to open it up a little. They're going to need a chunk play or two, I think, to, to get this one. Worst case scenario, they tie it because uh, we're up eight, so they have to score and get that two-point conversion. But let's see if defense can come up with a big play here. Number five, Gray Adams again trying to lead the comeback here in the fourth quarter. He you went off to the right. You want to make sure you keep everything in front. You don't want to give them an easy kind of. Nice job of making the catch there by number who 33. It? I think that it's was up in the Alaska. Yeah, kind of a double catch there. Luke Edmondson had the chance to kind of get a pick there. They did a good job of clocking it in the first uh, half, but got to line up here and get the snap left. away. Adams takes the snap, looks out to the left. Oh, incomplete pass. will stop the clock and bring up a second and ten. Dangerous throw there. Yeah, Carlos Harvin. Carlos had, yeah, now. had a had a chance at that one, but. Threw it low and outside, so that way only his guy could have got it. 124 left in the game. Like I said, got to be careful. Uh, they throw a lot of these short passes, so you got to be careful here that they don't pump and go you. Uh, you want to make sure you keep everything in front. You don't want to give up any big chunk plays, but you want to make sure you secure the tackle too. Hind back in the game. Him and Peyton Toll on the far side of the field again. Gill land as well on the same side. They're gonna Coming this way. The of the slant screen, route. Slant route. Nice job. Good job there. by Luke Edmondson there. A little high and came up for the hit. And ball bobbled, and Luke Edmondson made sure he didn't catch that ball. They'll bring up a third and 10 with 119 left. Yeah, third down here. This will be a big. See if we can see if Jalen can come off the edge here. And Again, Bethany has no timeouts remaining. 20 seconds left on the play clock. The 119 game clock is stopped after the incomplete pass. See right here what the defensive line can do. Adams takes Gonna a roll this way. The Throws the ball. Oh. Nice job by Reed Lyon there Reed with a the big breakup. Could have possibly could have picked, could've it, picked off. it off, but that's okay. It's not a bad idea there a little to bit block it down. Yeah. Bring big down, down here. 114 left. This could be the ball game. Yeah, this would be a big stop right here. This would be a big win. Didn't play our best game, but uh, found a way to come back. But timeout here. Cash is going to call a timeout. We'll take it with them here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Phillips Music Company is now the largest and most complete music store in Southwest Oklahoma. And they're excited to be your source for all Fender guitars and accessories with band instruments from Yamaha and Con Selmer, guitars from Ibanez, Paul Reed Smith, and Siegel, the latest in music tech from Roland, Yamaha, and Line 6, and a great selection of recording hardware and software. All at the best price with great local service and lessons available on most instruments. Visit PhillipsMusic.com to shop online or stop by Phillips Music 107 Southwest Sheridan Road. Back here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. 114 remaining. Fourth and ten for the Bethany Broncos. This could be the game right here. Sure could be. Want to make sure still keep everything in front. First down is not the end of the world. Just don't want to kind of force something over your head. So Peyton Tolan Taylor, time to your far side. Number 85, Jared Malaska. Number 33, Jocelyn Malaska at the bottom of your screen. Graham's in the back of Wood Gilliland. Gilliam out to the right. He's trying to throw, throw it. A little yep. Cross again. It's going to be caught. Ball. It's a fumble. And Cash Bulldogs recover. And ball that game. should be the ball game. Cash forces a turnover when it matters the most. First and 10. Bulldogs 
108 left in the game. I have a feeling we're going to see the best formation in football right now. It's called the victory formation. The Cash Bulldogs, and they will. Yeah, there you see the players. They're doing the yeah, V. Yeah, they're doing the V. Great job in the second half of coming back. Just didn't look like ourselves at all in the first half, but found a way to fight back. A win's a win. Lots to, lot to improve on and a lot to work on as we move forward in the season. Next week will be on Saturday at New, in Newcastle, hopefully. Hunter Glenn goes up and takes the ball, sits on it. He's going to take at least one more snap. Please help us with that. I think we'll probably only need to get one more in. Yeah, they'll need, need to, to snap it just one more time. Yeah, snap this ball underneath the 40-second mark, and then you don't have to snap it again. And then you'll see me leisurely try and get to the field. I want you to hear what uh, Coach Griffin has to say after this win. You know, after the off week last year, the off week was a little different, and he yeah. tried to play it different this year. They start off slow again, but able to come back and – Finish this game off as Vincent heads down there to talk to Coach Griffin. And Hunter Glenn takes the knee, and that will put a bow on this game as the Cash Bulldogs win this one over the Bethany Broncos, 28-20 to with another second-half comeback. We're going to take a break, and we'll come back with well, the final things and wrap it up, and Vincent with Coach Griffin here in just a minute on the Oklahoma Sports Network. Back here on the Oklahoma Sports Network as the Cash Bulldogs finish off the second half comeback and open up for a District 1 play with a 28-20 win over the Bethany Broncos. Obviously a couple of big plays in this game in the first half. We have Kynell Daniels, a couple of big runs in this game. One of those final stats where we had to be approaching 200 yards, had a, a couple of touchdowns. But really the turning point in this game was the punt block and return for touchdown by Zach Johnson, who's coming back off of the injury in an off week and um, been a little bit hobbled the first few weeks after that first game. But obviously a really big play in this game. And as he scored, blocked that kick and ran that in for a touchdown, got the crowd back into this, and then the Cats Bulldogs Proceed to show some tempo to the Bethany Broncos with the run game, hammering away, wearing them down in the second half of the fourth quarter, and finally coming away with a 28-20 to win over the Bethany Broncos, who are now moving to 0-1 in district play. You'll see the Cash Bulldogs right here on Oklahoma Sports Network next week, hopefully on Saturday at 2 p.m. as they travel to Newcastle to take on the Racers, who was off this week because of the COVID issues, and they will be back to practice on Wednesday, and that's why they were moving that game to Saturday to give Newcastle Racers. Uh, Coach Griffin talked to him earlier, and he said it was only fair to be able to give them a little bit of time uh, to practice and you know, go through some things because they've not been able to do that there now for a, a week or two. And so a Cash Bulldogs win this one 28-20 as we wait for Vincent Saylor with Coach Griffin. See what Coach Griffin has to say about this win. Obviously, the first half started off sort of sloppy. Kind of Daniels with the big run the first half. And then it just got sloppy after that. We talked about it during the game, how clean it was, how clean play the game was. And then it got a little bit sloppy, but Cash able to come back in the second half. We know they are a second-half team. We've seen that. We don't know what it is about this team. Uh, Vincent talked about that a little bit before the start of the second half, that you know, very possibly we can attribute that to the strength and conditioning program here uh, at Cash. They do a, a great job with that, uh, getting everybody physically ready. And, of course, they are a very mentally ready team as well. But they're able to come off with a 28-20 to win here, much-needed district win over Bethany, who in the past has been a powerhouse in 4A. Definitely look like they are um, still a good, solid team this year, very young. But... They have a lot of talent, a lot of young, young talent, and I'm interested to see how they actually do in 4A District 1. 4A District 1 and 4A District 2 are arguably the two best districts in Class 4A. The other ones are a little bit 
uh, top-heavy, if you will. Um, but we're again waiting here, Coach Griffin, uh, with Vincent Saylor, as Griffin is talking to the players right now post-game. I want to thank Jake Shantz and Caleb Hannabass as well for uh, their job tonight. Done a fantastic job producing and, and on the camera, able to bring this game to you. As Coach Griffin heads over to Vincent Saylor for some post-game comments. Hey guys, down here with Coach Griffin after the big uh, first district win. Coach, kind of a uh, tale of two halves, I guess. First half, not as, probably not as uh, clean as you want to, but what could you say about the second half and the resiliency of this team? Well, we know all along. You know, we, we've been saying it for two years. We're a second half team. I wish we could change that and be a complete <laughs> game team. But, right. you know, whatever gets it done, uh, our kids just have so much fight and heart. And, again, our strength and conditioning program, I can't talk about it enough. And these kids know it and they believe in it. And I challenged them to come out and take control second half. Our defense stepped up. Our offensive line took control like I told them yeah. to and it's just really a good job against a good football team you know Bethany give them credit they've got some players over there that 80 is something else <laughs> yes he is <laughs> yeah, yeah you kind of touched on that with the offensive line I mean talk about some of those guys I mean they really took over not only offensive line but the defensive line kind of took over the game in the second half talk a little bit about some of those guys on the front you know Jeffrey Patty Aker Alden Connerman William Quitone you know, I, I could name them all they're just all getting better every and, you know, I challenged him. I said, we've got the offensive line around, I feel, and we just need to utilize that as our strength in the same way defensively, you know. We've got so many of them that we can use Ty Brinsfield as defense only and Joseph Brown's defensive only, and, and that pays off late in a game like that. No doubt about that, Coach. Got a little bit of a longer week this week with a game potentially on Saturday against Newcastle. Is anything that you uh, change during the week because it's a little bit of a different week or anything like that, anything that we can look forward to coming up with Newcastle? We just have one more day to prepare than normal, and by gosh, we need it. <laughs> <laughs> Good deal. Coach, congratulations on the big win, 1-0 and in District 4A. So look forward to the rest of the season. Thank you. All right. Guys, back up. Thank Coach Griffin for taking time out to talk. And he, he uh, with Vincent, he, he said exactly what we were just talking about. He attributed this to um, the weight program. And he said at halftime he went and told the guys, hey, let's take over this second half. And we show the resiliency and obviously the endurance uh, by the Cash Bulldogs in this second half. As again, they're able to. And come back and win this game in the second half and finish the 28 to 20 win moving to 1 and 0 in district play as they head up to Newcastle to take on the young and talented racers uh, next Saturday at 2 p.m. You can catch that here on the Oklahoma Sports Network. You'll be able to catch the pregame there at 1.30 p.m. Again, for Vincent Saylor, Jake Shantz, and Caleb Hannabas, I'm Billy Palmer. Everybody have a good and safe weekend. Thank you for joining us on the Oklahoma Sports Network.